It's Time Fair Mac Break Weekly, episode 220. Coming up in just a bit, bye-bye to the X-Serve. So long to the white iPhone. And T-Mobile says it's all Apple's fault. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 220, recorded November 9th, 2010. That's my mousing hand. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Squarespace.com. The fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off the lifetime of your new account, go to squarespace.com slash macbreak and use the offer code macbreak. And by drobo.com. The original S Pro and the new Drobo Elite, offering expandable storage products for individuals, small businesses, and creative teams. For more information and instant rebates, visit drobo.com slash macbreak. And by Go to My PC. For those of us who work around the clock, you can access your files and applications around the clock too with Go to My PC. For your free 30-day trial, visit gotomypc.com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly. This is the show that covers your Macintosh needs in deep, uh, thoughtful, thoughtful ways. Mm, boy, we've been thoughtful today. Let me tell you, here he is, Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Core, PixelCore.com, for that guild of multimedia artists who hello, are hello. learning and working together. And, of course, PixelCore.tv for the podcast they produce. Hello, Alex. Hi, it's good, good to be Good to have you here. He's back, ladies and gentlemen, and he's ready. Look how good he looks. He's sharp. It's Mr. Merlin Mann. Hello, Leo. How are you? MerlinMann.com, 43 folders, and the fabulous podcast, You Look Nice Today, the special birth edition, just out now on... Uh, CD and 45. Also here with us, Mr. Andy Anotko. <laughs> Very thoughtful Andy Anotko. He's pretending to be serious. He was the guy getting us in trouble for the last hour. How long can he hold it? How long can he hold it? Mm, look at that. He's very serious. Mm -hmm. I think it's a still, actually. No, wait a minute. The leaves behind him are moving. And he works for the Chicago Sun-Times and is a blogger at www.cwob.com. Hello, everybody. Hello, Gary Marshall. I almost hate to bring this up. We've been having so much fun, <laughs> and now this, which is both serious and boring. Apple has killed the X serve. <laughs> Story two. Uh, no, is there anything to say about that at all? Uh, Alex, I immediately well, thought of Alex. I immediately yeah, thought of Alex. Yeah. Lindsay. And I should point out, I blame myself because we just bought an X serve. Oh, I am you not did it kidding. To us. You did it to us. We were fine, and then you had I to just buy bought an X serve. We thought we were using. You know, we uh, we have a San. Storage area network that records right now. We're recording in Final Cut Pro on a Mac here, going through the fiber to the SAN, and you need a data controller for that. And we were using uh, a, an old G5 Mac that we had lying around, Quad G5. We felt that wasn't sufficient, so we went out and literally just a week or two ago bought an X Serve. I'm glad we got one actually, because I think you know these are still good machines. No, I, think, I think that they're great machines. I think that um, this furthers the uh, conversation that we've been having over the last couple months about Apple not being interested in trucks. I mean, I think the X Serve no is first. As a user of a Mac Pro, I'm worried that the Mac Pros are three to five years down the road. We're not going to see any of those either. You saw the, the post, the forum post, where somebody from Apple said, oh, no, don't worry, we're still going to make Mac Pros and, you know, at servers, and we're still very interested, and it was deleted. Not, don't know why, but right. some people well, say maybe that this is not official policy. Apple spending a lot of energy on iPhones, iPads, and netbooks, essentially. Making a lot um, of money, presumably. On not, this. not spending as much time. And, and, and the argument is, is that, you know, Steve's argument has been that, you know, we're not selling very many of them. And but they still market, need a truck because if you don't have a truck, who's going to produce the content for these devices? There's an ecosystem. There's an ecosystem that, that is that we're giving up here. Uh, and, and I think that that's the, that's the real issue is you can't, you can no longer now have a completely Mac ecosystem, which I think affects a lot of things downstream. Well, the, the interesting thing is that every time I've seen a Mac OS X server in a server closet, it's never been a Blade. It's always been a Mac Mini. Uh, so if you're wondering who's buying up all these Mac Minis, it turns out that it's just some administrators. They do make a server uh, version. We have, we have a lot of Mac yeah, exactly. Minis. You can, you, can buy, you can buy the Mac Mini in a server configuration, and it is a lot more popular than you might think. 
We have, we have, I will say, we don't have any Xserves. Why would you and, need and an Xserve? Six, if, I think six Mac minis. Xserve's faster, right? It's got a faster processor. Oh, yeah. If, if you want to use it as a, as a, you know, there are a lot of things. It's, it's more robust. It's got, you, you can swap things out a lot easily. So if you're in a, in a large environment, Mac minis are not what you want because you can't put cards into them. You can't put right. extra drives into them. You can't put. We put know, fiber just, channel, in, for instance, into our Xserve. We need that. It has to have fiber, right? Those types of things. Well, like, for instance, if you look at a Final Cut server, how do you run Final Cut server off of an Xan and, all these other things. I mean, you, you'll use a Mac Pro is what you're going to have. To, How about Mac. if you run OS X server on a Mac Pro? Isn't that a server? Yeah, it's just that it's a lot of room for something that's I doing. See. You know, you're it's taking bigger. up this huge rack space, right. Um, right. Uh, and they're not even designed to go into a rack space. And so, and, and so, I think that this. I do think though that this continues to make the 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 argument that at some point Apple needs to license or or open source the old yeah. version of OS X because well, they got to give us the opportunity to put. Oh, it's there 10 is, on, it's on not, servers. It's, it's, Alex, it's open, open source, source OS 10 Lindsay. Uh, or license. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, the, I, I had the good fortune to be at the uh, Mac Tech Conference, uh, which is a conference for IT prof Mac IT professionals oh. in L.A. Like when this announcement came down, and at the time I likened it to being fortunate enough to be in L.A. when the Rodney King verdict came down, <laughs> right. uh, because there was there was a lot of discussion at breakfast about how this would affect their lives. Uh, and something that I heard from more than one person is that uh, if Apple were to simply re remove the remove the restriction against virtualization on the server version of the OS, they don't feel as though this would be a big problem for them. Some of them said, actually explicitly said that if they don't remove the virtualization feature, uh, virtualization limitation now, I will be furious about this decision because it's uh, the, the the differences between people who are doing really the real kind of uh, actual admin stuff as opposed to the people who are just trying to support ten or twenty users on on file sharing is different because uh, a a server grade computer is a totally different beast from a consumer grade machine and so for a lot of these people that means that they have to change everything that they're either change everything that they that they do with the Macintosh or wait for the inevitable market to pop up for people to buy Mac Pros and reassemble them into blades, like into, into server-grade machines, and then resell them on the secondary market. Which the Mac Pro also, for. this kind of just supports what everybody else has said, I guess, but the Mac Pro also has... Uh, is, that, is that okay? Is that me? Yeah, no, that's me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the, the Mac Pro has a really important role as a giant asterisk on everything. So, you know, if you read any review of an iPad... Uh, of an iPhone, of especially the iPad and the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, though. Uh, I think in Snell's, was it Snell or, yeah, he wrote the big MacBook Air one, right? It was like, well, you know, if you really need the firepower, you can still buy a you Mac still Pro. Mac Pro. In fact, it's, I've done it just, that. It comes up a lot. It comes up a I lot. I bought both. I bought a Mac Pro recently, like in the last month, Mac Pro and a MacBook Air, and now I feel complete. But it's yeah. like Nietzsche and that whole idea of the constellation of suicide. It's like it, knowing that the Mac Pro is there, even if they don't sell that many, gives them an asterisk to put out right. thinner. You still can. Model. Well, and I still does that think, make any sense? Yes, I, I think it does. And that's. But I mean, the point is, it's more than an asterisk. It needs to be there. There, it doesn't. You do need that part of the product line. Again, don't you? again, now if you want to run Final Cut Server, uh, you, you're in those types of applications. You're in a situation where you have to have a Mac Pro to do it. It's completely for large companies that want to have a, right. a, a Mac uh, infrastructure, have a have a Mac uh, a, a hundred percent Mac pipeline. Um, this is, is a, this is a massive hit. You this know, is July it, January thirty first. This happens. Is it possible that they have something else, a one U something that they? Or are they just going to kill I, the I don't rack think so. mounts? I think they're killing no the more rack, rack mounts. I think I think this is. I, I I still think I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but I, I really think this is this is an evolution away from all of the quote unquote trucks. And I think that this is as big as it's going to be. I'm not sure now. I fully understand why you would kill a product that's selling presumably because uh, it's not selling enough. So you just don't want to stock it, even though it's it's kind of important yeah, it's, for a, a business, let's say, who wants to be just as you said. I, yep. I don't, Isn't that important? I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying that I think that right. this is the, and you've got he's got a staff, the kind of sales engineers that are going to be in that so. channel. And it's, it's there's more to it than just like I obviously understand this, but there's more to it than just putting it in boxes and then keeping it around till somebody yeah, wants to buy it. There's right. a couple cost of that, but then there's just, I mean, there's things like whatever the trade shows, and there's all the support issues. Like I would have to imagine. Well, they haven't I, been doing much much uh, trade shows. <laughs> at, trade at shows? All. Are there any trade uh, or, or any real support other than when yeah. you call and, yeah. and talk to someone? But there is. You, Merlin's completely correct that there's a lot of support. There's some a lot infrastructure more support. that needs to be in there. Yeah. Um, because man, I'll tell you, professional clients when they buy machines and think that, and things don't work. They're not like consumers where they're willing yeah. to put up with it. There's a lot of angry calls and a lot of upset because they spend a lot yeah. of money. Can we retrace our steps on the Mac Mini thing, though? Because I guess I, I, I have been hearing something in between what you guys were saying. I've I'd heard also that people are just buying crap tons of Mac Minis to use, I guess, as Andy was saying, as, as I don't exactly understand exactly why, but it's apparently they're... A, 
close enough to a commodity in some ways that you can buy a crap ton of these and serve a lot well, of your own needs. There's a, I'm just thinking here we have one, two, three, four, seven Mac Minis. We have one extra, but we have seven Mac Minis. And we've been looking at using them for our QuickTime compression and some of our rendering. Yeah. There's, but are there's they really, fast enough? Yeah, well, there's two, there's two different ways of going. There, there are, you know, um, a, uh, quality versus quantity. And so when you're looking at rendering out to a lot of um, rendering out, a lot of nodes. One one way to go um, is to just have a lot of cheap nodes that when one fails or one needs to be replaced, you just pull it out and it has a small effect on the total, or you spend a lot on each one. Um, so for the price of one Xserve, you can buy you know four or five of these Mac Minis. Yeah. And so I think that the, the argument is is then you have a bunch of them and they can all be doing different things and they can all and that's a lot of processors um, between them all. And now if they put if they beefed up the Mac Mini, you know a little bit, just just bigger processors, um, you know allow it to then I, I think I would be less stressed about it. But the virtualization thing is also important. Um, you know, I think that Apple needs to let us do that. I mean, on the PC, we can have six instances of, of Windows running on one Mac Mini. And that's important right. for us because we have stuff that doesn't require a lot of processor. It's serving up keys. Um, but we need to have lots of versions to run on the same machine. What, uh, Noble asked an interesting question in the chat room. What does Apple.com run on? It probably runs on Linux in a server Linux. farm I think it's somewhere. On Linux. <laughs> it probably yeah. is. Yeah, probably. And that might it's be why they made it. It's a combination of Linux and like web objects, a lot of it. Right, and maybe it is. Well, in I which think case, you, that kind of answers the question. I mean, the, if Apple doesn't use them. Well, I'm curious what Pixar uses because this, this... Pixar, we know now, uses PCs. Well, and, and this may have been... The, this may be the... Uh, one of the things where where you have a, a CEO on both companies that that looked at them and Pixar says, you know, these just aren't what we need. They're not what we I want. Have a towel that manages their rendering stuff, as you want me to find out. I think there was a I read no, story I think, just recently that said Pixar is using PCs. Yeah, no, I think that they are, and I think that they, uh, um, I think that 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 might have affected it because they said, well, this company isn't going to use them, uh, you know, and they're not solving it. I think I can see why Steve Jobs would say, well, let's just at at SIGGRAPH. Two years ago, Pixar said uh, the Render Man was going to be fully compatible with Windows. Um, I know I saw a story, and well, I, I don't think they're running. I think they're running on on PC uh, infrastructure. I think they're running on Linux, though. I don't think they're. I don't think that they're running on Windows. They might. Render Man may be compatible with Windows, but I don't think Pixar is running on Windows. I think they're running on Linux. Ping your buddy, Merlin. Mm -hmm. Working on it. Let us know. Ping your buddy. It's it's completely uh, confidential. We won't. Uh, I would be I would be very <laughs> surprised that a company. Uh, uh, Here it a is. Visual I, I found the announcement. Running this was. On it. This was at uh, PDC, the Microsoft Professional Developers Conference. Microsoft announced this. Uh, Pixar uses Azure, the Windows, uh, the Windows cloud solution. Pixar, Pixar uh, has put RenderMan on the cloud huh. via Windows Azure cloud computing platform, and Microsoft announced it. You know, Microsoft announced it at their big, uh, at their big wow. uh, event. So it, Pixar doesn't even mind that that's his knowledge. Can, can I ask a real dumb noob question, Alex? Yep. What, what is it about Apple or is it the integration with Final Cut? What is it that you uh, can't do with something like, like, like Linux? Uh, well, well, for instance, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we, that we use that, that is based on Xan. So we've, we've got software and we've got things. So, and, and that's all something that's wired into. I it's an Apple product. It's an Apple product. And uh, no, it's not. It's not that it's impossible. It's just that there are a lot of Mac tools that that we want to use. And, and, and for instance, if we want to run Final Cut on a, if you want to have something that that is rack mountable, that we can that we can run some of the Mac stuff on it. We can um, use all the Mac tools, use the Mac knowledge that we have. Uh, we don't have to worry about you know. The, so there's a lot of things that um, you know, administrating a, Win a Linux or Windows uh, environment is much more complicated in our opinion than administrating a an OS 10 client. And we do both. I mean, we have a lot of our servers that are running on Windows and a lot of our servers that are running on Mac. So, so it's not, and some of them are running on Linux. And so, so it's not that it's one way or the other. It's just that um, taking that out of the pipeline for us, I think, you know, we'll be fine. We'll do whatever we're going to do. But I think there are people who have wanted to have a hundred percent Mac, pl you know, platform with all the tools and they have it all working and it's a lower impact on their IT and so on and so forth. And that's going to be taken away from them. And it, the problem is I think that when IT, when that goes away from IT, it also weakens that central point of, you know, companies who are moving towards the Mac platform. If, you know, you, you're, you're weakening the Mac IT folks who are in those companies usually campaigning to have more iPhones, more Macs, you know, being bought for them. You know, when, when you take out that, that central piece, uh, it strengthens the Windows side and it makes it harder for them to move forward. Noble in our chat room has sent me a link to uh, uptime.netcraft.com that confirms that Apple is, in fact, running Macs for most of its server uh, you'll see these are all Apache running on Darwin. 
which is, of course, Macintosh. There are a few Apache running on Unixes here, Apple Order one.apple.com, which sounds like uh, maybe the e-commerce consultants.apple.com, gsx.apple.com. But most of the Apple servers, in, now iTunes it does it, is running on Linux, oddly enough, iTunes.apple.com. Is running on Linux. I wonder what that's, that's a lot of Apple script, isn't it? Isn't iTunes? No, iTunes the app. I don't know what I'm saying. Never no, mind. this I'm is like, the server. The, yeah, the server. Course, I know. I'm sorry. The back I'm end, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then I thought uh, web objects. I thought there was a lot of web objects still kind of hanging around. There's web objects. You see web objects the in store here. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they use a lot of web objects. It's interesting. This is actually. I don't. I didn't. Uh, Netcraft is a great site for finding out. Super cool. What, <laughs> you could put yeah. in a site and find out what this site is running. Let's see. Uh, Microsoft.com. What do you think? <laughs> this could be oh, a rat it's hole. Gonna, yeah. It's going to be running on, running on this, hope. This could be hope. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yes, they're running. See, you got to eat your own dog food. So Microsoft's all yeah. running on its own servers, as you would expect. 2003, though, not not a more recent one. Um, very interesting. Darwin does not mean it's necessarily uh, somebody in the chat room is pointing out. G Herndon, uh, Mac hardware, but I don't understand why Apple, which probably gets a deal on Mac hardware, would bother running it. Anything but <laughs> Evidently, they know somebody there. <laughs> they, 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 might have, they make a phone they call. They might have friends uh, there. They get a ten percent discount. I, I, I'm just thinking more about this Mac Pro thing. I mean, can we just agree that that's not going to go away? I mean, I like, hope not. I can't. Well, I mean, like developers, like your builds. Like, right. what are you going to do? You have to. For now, I mean, the thing is, is that why you know when you look at. Uh, I think that eventually developers are going to be able to develop on the iOS platform. And right now it's very it's very early on, and the iOS platform is not ready to do any of that. But I don't think that that means that it's never going to be ready to do that. I don't like think it's going to... Build, build of a Cocoa app on, a, on an iPhone? You want to, build, no, you want no, to use on it on an for iPad. No, 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 or, or, no, no. Come on. Now, get real. No, but I think that... Get real. It's like the washing iOS, rice but, one, one grain at a time. Yeah. But the iOS the iOS running on a, on a laptop, you know, could be a development... Process. I bet, I'm sure they're developers. In fact, um, uh, Aaron Hillegas, I think, was saying he was running Xcode on an Air. Um, I'm sure they're developers yeah, yeah, yeah. who will do some of it on yeah. Air. You don't want to do the big compiles. Yeah, that is maybe. little. Is that the 11 inch? Oh, this is your this is your computer, Merlin. This is the Crimey, one you wanted. Small. Didn't you want you wanted a, a return yeah. of the 12, right? Yeah, we bought three of the 12 inches. But remember, uh, remember that a lot of the a lot of the Xcode stuff involves uh, uh, disk access. So it's going to do pretty well. Yeah, it's got, it's got, you're yeah. a solid state. Yeah, solid state. Solid state is a good choice. Yeah, yeah Merlin, this is this is your uh, this is the one you wanted. That's nice. That's it's, nice. It is. I have to say, it's my. Uh, it's pretty much my only computer now. It's I don't even so use the little. iPad. It's so little. I don't use the iPad as much as I expected. I really don't. iPad is a, is is a toy. Well, I mean, it's, it's a good no. toy. It's really fun and it's no, fun for no, reading. No, 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 you, you don't no, think no. it's a toy? Anytime I'm on a trip of less than less than four days, I don't even think about bringing Travel a MacBook. Would be good. Here, look at this. Unless, unless there's a specific app that's Mac only that I need. It's, it is, this is the it's only reason so I far still an expectation. <laughs> just, to, just to be clear, like, uh, I, I, A, I don't think it's a toy, and, and B, I, I don't mean to start a turf war. I just, it's more a thing of, like, I, just, I do like to type, and, like, the, the Bluetooth keyboard thing, you know, is is uh, good when you're writing a lot. It's funny, though, like... Um, hey, Hemi, you're, Hemi, you gotta show, I got to show you this. Jake Ehrlich's here from... Uh, Bullet train. Do you have your you have your device here? Are you selling these, or is this just something you made for a prototype? No, no, no. We just launched uh, a couple weeks ago. Show me the one with the keyboard and the uh, magic mouse built into it. He's got a plexiglass. <laughs> this is kind of amazing. Look at this. Oh, here, I'll show you. I've I'll seen show those. You. Have you seen it? So there's a magic <laughs> yeah, trackpad and a Bluetooth keyboard <laughs> in a... Wow. In a little thing. I, but it's, to me, if like you've got an That's iPad, clever. do you really want to carry this around? Why don't you just... It weighs more. No, but you can use that on the this. desktop. But I would use this with the desktop. You just leave it there when you get your iPad back. I wouldn't even use you, my iPad. When you consider, when you consider when you're traveling around, oh, I'm going to be taking computer. my iPad with me anyway because it's going to be my e-reader and it's also going to be the my entertainment device for the plane. So the question is, do I really want to bring a second computer when the iPad can do most of my reading, writing, and arithmetic? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: is this, you know what's this is what's Look, happened to me. Let's put let's put it this way: I, 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 that was uh, inappropriately uh, diminutive of me. Different strokes for different folks, and what's nice is that there are there's the iPhone, there's the iPad, uh, there's the Air, there's the laptop, and there's the Pros. And I think that <laughs> Apple has a good story to tell, and for a different people, different things. I don't, I don't think that we I, have to be exclusionary. I, totally. and, and I've accepted. Just I think I, Andy, you were one of the first people I think who said this, and just the the way to understand the iPad is you can't treat it like a laptop. Right. And so I don't, I don't, and I think anybody who gets an iPad and ends up enjoying it, let's go of that idea that it has to be a first or second device. It's a third yeah. device, but uh, but at the same time, just given the kind of stuff that I do. Um, I mean, I can think of a few things, rat hole, but I can think of a few things that would help a lot. Like it, it, stuff like I find myself having to do a lot of weird 
um, gosh, how do I make this into a PDF I can mark up from my iPad? Well, you know, and I can, there's ways I can do that. I know, you shouldn't I know, be doing just, that, right? You know, or how can well, I print? Or I? How can well, I print? See, you know, it's, 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 but then you're traveling, you're traveling and you weeks. have to account for curve. You have to count for curveballs. 4.2. You You're saying yeah. wait for 4.2. Exactly. exactly. No, no that's, 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 I, I, and Merle, I agree with that completely. Uh, I think that's the distinction between an I, buying an iPad and buying a real MacBook or even buying a Windows netbook. That if you can, if you are 90% sure that you know what you're going to be facing uh, when you're out uh, out and traveling, uh, then the mm -hmm. iPad can certainly handle it. Uh, if you, if that's why I, I kind of define it as two or three days because right. that's right. about as far into the future as I can see. Uh, if, uh, if I, if you, if I have wind up in a situation where, ah, damn it, I need to redo this presentation. And unfortunately, this has the, the, the iPad has Keynote, but it doesn't have a whole bunch of these, these media files I really want that would be very easy to get if mm -hmm. I have a notebook, but almost impossible to get a hold of if I had my iPad. Uh, it's, it, it's definitely a, yeah. a different thing. I will say, though, that the Air, the 11 inch Air really has complicated the decision about what kind of machine you want to get. I don't think that most people, if they already have a MacBook, would buy both this no. and an iPad. And this is going to force them to think about, well, if I'm going to be spending five or 600 bucks on an iPad anyway, why don't I spend another $400, not a small amount of money, but you get a lot more machine for it, for something that's not that much bigger, uh, but can actually be used as a real MacBook. Goodness, we're doing the commercial now. <laughs> We've taken everything we've learned. I have to say, though, it is not easy to hold it like that. You have to have very strong wrists to do that thing. Well, you, you have to be a man, <laughs> Leo. You've got to be a man. That's all that's required to be a man. I can't. You know, I, have to one thing. I can't this do it. This is going to be like some sort of martial arts, martial arts like exercise where we're just going to like stand like this, and the first person to drop it loses. Yeah, more than actually. I, actually, I can only win because this is Apple's. That's your MacBook. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. That's true. I paid good money for this one. You know what? You know what I think. That, well, just last thing on this is. That uh, I think the thing um, that I I didn't used to find vexing or troubling that I do find vexing and troubling now is the Apple's apparently uh, pretty unyielding uh, the way they're standing behind iTunes as the way you get stuff in and out Ugh. except for hacks Ugh. is really uh, damaging and I so. Agree. For me, yeah. like there's an advantage to it because they control the chain. It's very straightforward. But there are a lot of Windows users hate iTunes. Uh, the fact that you can't, you cannot, you have to get this act, this iPad activated through iTunes. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Well, and, the, the, what I do now is I, I mean, I haven't gotten this working totally well yet, but I actually have this thing I hacked together where I've made a common directory on Dropbox that will sync. Um, when I plug in, will sync my i or excuse me, what's it called? The good. Um, What's it called? Uh, God, I use it constantly. Green icon. Good, good reader. Good reader. Good I, reader. Good, yeah. re good reader to me is what makes the iPad usable for anything but fun. Right. And good because good reader. God, good reader just does so much great stuff. And for me, that though, I mean, that's still such a hack to have to go like, oh, do this connection. Yes, accept the connection. Do right. the thing. And then the syncing's not. You can R sync that, and that's not, and, uh, automate that. And it's not that hard. But I would really like to have confidence that either a section of Dropbox will constantly be updated and I don't have to think about it. Do you know what I mean? It's just that right now there's a lot of incontinuity between something that should be con contiguous, which is my Mac, my iPhone, and my iPad. See also the whole, you know, mobile me debacle. That should be where this is happening. Right. But until that is where it happens, I, I still feel like I have to think too much. And then I spend an hour dicking around. And not just because I'm dick around guy. It's like I really want to get this work done. But then I need, you know what I mean? That's, that's my problem when I try to use it for work. And... And, and, you know, the, if we say, if we do too much of this whole, well, oh, it's not an iPad or it's not an iPhone. Well, it's got to be something, you know, if it's, if you are going to, like you say, Andy, three days is probably an upper limit for me too, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it works fine. I think that Apple's come up with a really good mechanism for getting file, arbitrary files onto the device without having to go through iTunes. I think it's 100% successful. But on the other hand, uh, the ways of having a flat file system like what you have on uh, on Android, excuse me, I'm sorry, an open file system like what you have on Android isn't a complete solution either. Uh, my, my big frustration, again, has always been 
There is a PDF that's on this website. I can navigate to it from this iPad. I can read it on this iPad. I need a button within Safari that says, oh, it's a PDF. I will simply add this to iBooks for you. Or here is a Word file that I know I know how to understand. I will simply add this to iTunes right from the right from the right from the browser. Yeah. Uh, it's a mechanism. The mechanism that they have for shuttling files between apps works great so long as there's a certain degree of formality, and that's what mm -hmm. I use to get files. Uh, I mean, when, when I when I need to edit something, and this is just happened a couple of days ago where an editor didn't get a certain file. Uh, I was out to lunch and I had my iPad with me. No big deal. I just access Dropbox, uh, the file, because Dropbox is used as my central depository for fresh files. Uh, just tap the icon, email a link to somebody else or, either send, or email it to somebody else and uh, they have it immediately. But I do, of course, acknowledge that if it had an open file system, it wouldn't, I wouldn't even need to use Dropbox as an intermediary. I could simply drag that file into some place where my mail client could see it and then move it from there. Uh, so Maybe I that's one of the things Apple's going to do with this North Carolina uh, data center is do a Dropbox clone. Maybe they're going to even drive right. by Dropbox. Maybe can I maybe... two, two good reader tips, though, before we go that are yes. just great? You should know. Andy, you probably know number one. Do you know that if you're, uh, first of all, is it just in the version of the iPad software that I definitely don't have loaded on mine that you get the option to open in? iBooks um, and all that? I don't know because I don't use Goodreader. I think it's a horrendously ugly program, and I use AirSharing Pro instead. Right. Okay. Um, no, but the, I'm, so I'm sorry. Safari. I don't know much I meant, about that. I know no, barely, no, I meant, sorry, barely I meant as much Safari. about it. It's Safari if you click on a PDF, and it gives you the yeah. option to open it and other things. Is that in four point? Anyway, here's the tip. Tip number one. If you're in Safari and you're at HTTP colon slash slash whatever, put a G in front of the HTTP and hit enter and it opens that page or that PDF or whatever in Goodreader uh, and downloads it. Whoa. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Say that whoa. again. I, I think I missed that. That's in on the iPad. If you have Goodreader, yeah. Oh, on iPad the, or iPhone or iPhone. If you There's have a, bunch of on, There's uh, a bunch of protocols besides HTTP that do stuff. Right. So it's G-H-T-T-P? That's right. Wow. And that will download it into Goodreader, which I use mm -hmm. all the time. Now, get ready for this. There's a browser built into Goodreader, which on the first video, mm, that's kind of cool, whatever. But if you go in, like, do you ever have a, an occasion to go do a bunch of research on one topic? For the, I wanted to learn a lot about software patterns a few weeks ago. And I kept finding myself wanting to download and read all this stuff. And my Instapaper, I already hit the 200 article limit or whatever. Um, so I go and I do a search on Google inside of Goodreader. And when you're browsing in Goodreader's browser, Every link you click, it gives you the option to either follow that link like you would in a browser or to download it. So you can sit there huh. and do a search in Google. Are you following me? Do a search uh -huh. in Google and click every one of those links, and it'll download the page into Goodreader for you to read offline. Wow. Download the whole freaking thing. It won't have all the images and stuff because it doesn't have a base in it or anything. But this is huge for if you want to just blaze through a bunch of that stuff uh, really quickly. It's kind Goodreader, of your own, your own little Instapaper. Yeah. <laughs> Goodreader is like yeah. your own little like office on the Mac. It's just, well, and I, 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 the, it's just you can do so much. Air, air sharing as well. Great app too. The thing, the thing that we use it for uh, a lot is that we don't, sh every time I do a shoot now and anywhere, you know, we, what we make sure is we have all the manuals since all the manuals are available on PDF. Every manual for every piece of equipment that we have on a, uh, on a shoot, we have in someone's iPad. You know, and, and that has become, and being able to download it directly, the big problem is we have to plan it. I've got a you folder. Know, been, I've got a folder in yeah. Goodreader called, called Manuals and Documentation. Yeah. Um, you can download MP3s. You could download uh, yeah. whatever you want, and just it's right in Goodreader. And I think, I think air sharing has a lot of this. But now Goodreader has also added a lot of PDF markup stuff, mm -hmm. sort of along the lines of the... Uh, Andy, I, do, you want to, do you want to defend AirShare? Uh, does they're it both do, great apps. They're both great yeah, apps. It, it has a lot of those same features. Um, I believe it also even has that download to... Uh, if, you have, if you can express a certain file in the form of a URL, you can hand off the URL directly to AirSharing uh, and download it directly. I have to... I'm, that's one of those features that I use infrequently enough that I am now in the process of double checking to make sure you can do that uh, before I promise you can do that. Uh, but what my, my point is that I really, I, I, it's kind of stinks that there should be uh, a trick that you have to, a, a third party app and a trick in order to get this done. It should be that just like uh, it works so well on so many different apps where you can simply say, I've got this, uh, I've got this Word doc file or this PDF file. I want to keep it or I want to use it with another application, tap one button and it simply brings up, the iOS brings up a list automatically populated of here are all the apps that I know of that can deal with a PDF nicely. Which one do you want to send this to? It's you don't get that. You don't, that. you don't get that in your iPad? You don't uh, get that option? Yeah. 
It doesn't have okay. that as a built-in feature. Again, third-party apps like GoodReader and Air Sharing uh, will do it, but it really should be the sort of thing where, uh, I'm sorry, it, it should be a feature of the Safari browser where it knows that here is a, I recognize this as a link to a file. I'm not going to simply open it using uh, using the built-in reader. I'm going to treat it like an entity that can then be handed off either to uh, an email client, to uh, a word processor, or to anything else that knows how to deal with a PDF or a Word file. I'm going to send you a screen grab offline. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. We're going to take a break. You guys, Merlin's got to go grab his screen or something. Uh, Alex Lindsay is here. Merlin Mann, Andy Anako. Uh, there are some problems, apparently, with the uh, MacBook Air. We'll talk about that. There's lots more to talk about, and we'll get back to that in just a bit. But before we go too much farther, I want to mention our friends, our good friends at Squarespace. Dot com. I should let Alex do this commercial because how many Squarespace sites do you have at this point? Well, Quite DV, a few. DVGarage.com is uh, Squarespace. And so is PixelGore.com. So is um, we are. I'm just doing a new one uh, that you know. And it was one of those things that I um, <laughs> I went to this Ethiopian restaurant called Eat Moya, or it's Moya is is brand new in San Francisco and it's the best Ethiopian I've had in a long time. And um, uh, and they have a horrible website that was done on Google Sites or something like that that just barely works. And I said, you know what? You know, let me let me play with this a little bit, and so now I'm putting the whole thing together. You know, I was like, I was like, ah, I can't stand this, or whatever, you know, because I have nothing better to do. You know, you know, really, you know, just tooling around. So, so anyway, so um, but what's great about it is I can put this whole thing together really quickly. It's all WYSIWYG. It's not done yet. I, I haven't. That's kind of the fun thing is you just you know you want to throw up a website for well, one time only. Just throw it up, go to Squarespace, and you know you got it all there. And what's important is is that I'm not done with it yet. I haven't put it really put it up yet. But once it, when I'm done, they can edit it. Like what I don't want is that right. The, the, so you can the, assign them editor cap. Uh, I'm just going to give it to them, and then oh, I'll get, cool. and then they'll be able to when I'm done. So with you're it, in the it restaurant up. setting up their website. Yeah, when I, <laughs> it's just like you know, I love and, it. and uh, so the um, uh, and we're going to do you know we're going to have fun with it. Of course, you know what I'll, I'm using it as a as a test case for us. So we're going to shoot video for it and stills and redo well, the menu the, here's and. The, Here's the beauty part. You go there right now, squarespace.com slash MacBreak. Yeah. Click the try it free button. I mean, this I'm sure what you did. You didn't buy, I mean, it costs you nothing. You don't even need a credit card. I just was card. like, I'm just going to go play with this. You give them you the know? password, you know, use yeah. the email address, and that's it. You've got a site. If they have an existing site, which sometimes they do, you can al almost always import it directly using their uh, blog importer. Right. Using all the, you know, APIs. And they've got, they've got a bunch of templates. They've got a Great lot of templates. the stuff. A lot of the tools that, that you know, you can, you can write and you can build and you can download. But the problem is, is that I don't want to know, I don't want to know anything about servers. You know, I don't want to set up yeah. servers. Yeah. I don't want to port anything to the server. I don't want to put anything on an FTP site. I just want to go up, lay something out, and hit go. And that's what Squarespace is so good at, is just that you can drag it up. I, I don't need to know anything about code. I mean, I like to do, I, I'm playing a lot with Xcode now that we took our class and I'm having fun. Um, but uh, I don't want to know anything about HTTP, you know, HTML. They, they also do some, they do something, first of all, I must say, in the interest of disclosure, they give me a free account. I am uh, a hyper dork for Squarespace now. Really? I'm oh, I'm, um, so, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm Marlon. considering moving a fairly high profile side of mine uh, to there because I really, really, really like it. And I, uh, what I like about it that's cool is they, you literally can't touch the code. Which on the one hand goes, oh, you know, well, whatever, get Drupal. Like I'm on Drupal, I love Drupal, but like you, you literally can't touch <laughs> it's the probably code. Probably a good thing for me not the to touch thing, the code. Oh, I know, <laughs> yeah. for me. Yeah, but protect like, you from like, yourself. I love, I love WordPress, but in WordPress, if I want to change where the menu is, I have to I've, go change PHP. Yeah, and that makes me crazy at 44. Uh, and so I love WordPress. Don't get me wrong, but um, but you know what I love though is they've just ID'd and clasped the crap out of all the HTML. Right. And so there's all those sites you just saw, all those designs. Those are all just pure CSS. Yep. Um, chain, to my knowledge, I mean, mm -hmm. no, you're you can, right. Yeah, I mean, I think you can probably run some. You can do uh, some JavaScript and stuff. And if you, you can, want. yeah, you can install some stuff like sliders and things like that. Yeah. But um, well, and that's the key is you can if if you're a code if you're a code you know coder you can still go in here and and really uh, tool with the site tool with what you want to do. You're not limited to what they have. Look at these beautiful. But you don't have some to of start these sites them. are so yeah. gorgeous. People are doing such great stuff. It's like, but you know, Alex, to your point, I mean, like, and you know. Uh, I just, it's like if you're, I just, I'm so, I love websites. I've been doing this for a long time uh, it's for a job, but it's funny how I get to a point where like Tumblr, I love Tumblr because it's just click a bookmark. Like, right, and right. It Make it easy. Thing. Make yeah. it easy. That. I'm done. Like, I'm this, over like, the hand coding yeah. stuff. Yeah. I use the, I, I write a lot in Markdown, but on their site, I actually use the WYSIWYG. I just want to type and hit a button. Right. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people who want to type and hit a button. And if you don't, there's ample things out there but like if you need something like if you're ready to move your blog up or whatever um anyway i, I don't want to go on about it but i i 
I just, I've been very satisfied with them. Squarespace.com. If you go to squarespace.com slash Mac break, you can try it, as we said, for two weeks. Free, easy, no credit card required. Really give you a good sense of it. And, and do check out the iPhone app. That's fantastic. The stats. You know what we found that we really like? You can... Uh, uh, use the iPhone app to approve comments, to block spam, as well as to post. So it's really handy for... A really kind of, pretty app. Yeah, and, and great for administrating uh, your site. If you decide to buy, uh, and prices start at $12 a month, this is, by the way, hosting plus software. 10% off for the life of your site if you use the code MACBREAK. That's 10% off forever if you use the code MACBREAK. And, and, this, and when you look at those prices, always remember that you would be paying for a server somewhere. This is server plus software. Right. So, right. so the thing is, is that this is, you're getting all of that stuff plus all the servers. And I, we, we put up uh, six gigs of information on, on, on wow. you know, for the Ask a Ninja challenge that we did. And, um, and I even emailed them going, so I just put up a bunch of data and I'm going to talk about it. Or, are we going to be okay? You know, I like, and they were like, they're no, amazing. No problem. They were like, you can't, it's, you know, you can't there. bring it down. Well, just, and that's the whole awesome. thing. You, yeah. you know, you colo or you do something else or you, you know, someone's going to shut you off and, yep. and they, you know, you're really going to get, uh, it's just incredible service. Square, and, and an incredible ad. They just got yeah. <laughs> like the best ad I've ever heard. <laughs> we should just, re you know, record that and play it over and over again. Yeah. Squarespace.com slash MacBreak. Thank you, Squarespace, for your support. And obviously, we always try to pick uh, sponsors uh, that we use. And, right. uh, no, I use them. And they, like I said, they gave me a freebie. But like if they can sponsor my whole life, as far as I'm concerned, I, <laughs> yeah. love, I love what they do. And, I, you know, can I just say also, I, every time somebody sends me a freebie code for an iPhone app or whatever, like Justin, when Justin sent me that, I was like, you know, I'm just really excited that there's options now. It wasn't that many years ago that I just didn't have options for anything I wanted to do. If you wanted to host a site, you went to Pair and paid $40 right, a month. Right, if right. you wanted to have mobile connectivity, you went and bought a Trio and like, you know, that was what you had. And now it's like, which Markdown app that syncs with Dropbox do I want to use? It's like, you know, and with this, if you want to go and spend nothing and you've got the space, you can go put something up with, uh, anyway, not to go on, but I just, I'm glad there's options. I'm just uh, well, it's a sign of the maturity of the industry. Hey, look what John Gruber uh, just posted on uh, Instagram. Let me see if I could pull this one up. Apple has announced that there won't be a white iPhone until uh, next year, probably the iPhone 5. They've finally given up on it. And yet, somehow, he says, look what a little birdie sent me. Uh, a white what? iPhone. What? What? Show off. Show off. Show what? off. What? What? That's his kid. Yeah. His kid's playing with an iPhone. What's yeah, going a on? white iPhone. So wow, well, that would that'd be almost uh, almost impossible to build on your own or fake <laughs> photographic. No, I don't think he faked it. There are white iPhones. In fact, everybody at yeah. Apple they had white <laughs> John's, iPhones. John's forever faking photos. <laughs> Is he? Is he a big <laughs> no, photo faker, Mister no. Mister no. Photo Faker, John I'm Gruber? Saying, I'm, I'm, I'm it just, just lacks I'm, melanin. It lacks melanin. It That's lacks just... melanin. He got the one they that you know the albino phone. Um, is, it, is he saying it's his, or is that just a photo that someone sent him? He said, "No, no, that's his kid, right?" So he sent somebody <laughs> sent him a white. But you know, there are white iPhones out there. Walt right, Mossberg yeah. got a white iPhone. Yeah. All the Apple folks have white there's iPhones. There's just not. There's just not a lot of white. Right. IPhones. There's a handful of them. Obviously, somebody from Apple said, "Oh, I'll send you mine." I don't. I wouldn't yeah. be my guess. I guess I just don't care. I don't want a white iPhone. I, I look like a band aid. You should care, Alex. It's interesting for two important reasons. Okay. I think. I could care less about having a white iPhone. I think they're whatever. But like, a, it's re Apple very seldom, very That's seldom sa says anything that they can't do. That's true. Right. Okay. And e that that they can't do it is interesting. That the manufacturing part of this is so challenging that they get obviously. I guess the way you guys described it, the, the tech of it goes over my head. Sorry, I didn't mean to play that okay. noise. But the, the tech of it goes over my head a little bit. But I guess the way Andy wasn't that your explanation that it was like uh, modeled, like discontinuous colors. The, the, I didn't. Well, I, I have no specific information about the iPhone. I was told by people who are experienced in materials engineering that if you have a brand new substance that you're trying to make something out of, white is a difficult color to do because it's easy to do white. It's hard to do a hundred cop, hundred thousand copies of something that are the same shade of white. I don't. It could, it could just as easily be that white shows up scratches on the glass a lot worse than the black model does. Uh, but this is what's again someone who has been in uh, 18 years with a manu uh, manufacturing experience told me that with white. If you know exactly the kind of material you're working with and there's a lot of experience working with that material, it's not a problem. If it's something that no one has ever used this material in this application before, there's going to be a lot of R&D. Why is tricky? Hmm. So uh, as I, oh, another story I don't want to really report on, but I, but I guess we will. There are some reported problems with the logic board and the display on MacBook Airs. I thought it was the older one, though. It's not this one. No, the older one had pro absolutely had huge problems with overheating and so right. forth. No, this is the 2010 mm. MacBook okay. Air. Okay. Uh, this is according to Engadget. 
uh, which says MacBook Air owners reporting logic board and display issues. There's a picture of one. Ah, the gray screen. With the uh, the kernel mm -hmm. panic mm -hmm. and all of that. Here's a, I really uh, want to see a visual of a kernel panicking. What he looks like? I imagine a white mustache. <laughs> he's the Monopoly. You're saying he's the Monopoly I'll say, I'll guy. Say. <laughs> it was Colonel Panic Colonel in Panic. the conservatory <laughs> with the unreferenced, unallocated memories. <laughs> All I can say is I, I haven't had a problem with mine, and I don't know anybody who has. So, you know, when you get a new product, can, always oh, there are I can, problems, right? I, I, I can say that I've had one Colonel Panic with this and one or two instances in which it would not for some reason wake up from sleep. That's that when this always happens, apparently, is when you yeah. wake up. Yeah. Mm. So. But so you have had problems. I haven't had a, a one. Well, I, I'm not sure if I call it problems plural. It's not. It wouldn't. If it, it, it's the sort of thing that only racks into focus for me when I realize that other people are having this problem too. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of kernel panics when I wake up as well. <laughs> it's, it's really it's a common problem. It's for like me. night terrors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Web it's, 008 says kernel panic with a white iPhone in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what do you guys think of this story about Adobe Flash? Killing the battery on the MacBook Air. Um, Daniel uh, Aaron Dilger, uh, writing in Apple Insider, says by two hours. I mean, you only get five I, hours total. I don't. I'm not buying. Uh, it. Big deal. Well, it's not even a big deal. I, I think that what okay, if you turn if you turn on if you go to a site that Actually, has it's Ars Technica. Chris Foreman writing an Ars Technica. If you go to a site and you let it run over and over and over again with uh, you know animated flash things on a website, yeah, it's gonna. But if, let you, it, if you play let a it movie. Run. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna. It's, it's no, but just, I'm saying that what he. I think what he did though is he, he went to a site that's got a bunch of flash on it, and then he let uh -huh. it run for the whole time. And of course, it's gonna shorten it. But if you played a bunch of movies there, it would shorten it as well. I mean, I, there's a lot of things about flash that I don't like. I, I just don't. I'm not buying. Well, this wait one. a minute. Yeah, I was I was playing. Well, I see. I was playing MP. One of my stress tests was to play MP4 at full like DVD resolution, full screen for as long as it would go, and that knocked about an hour to hour and a half off the five hour battery life. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that they've demonstrated yet that they're that it's doing an unusual amount of battery drain as opposed to just any application that uses the cpu a lot yeah. and by nature keeps the screen alive well, keeps and his point alive. is that these web pages had flash ads and that if you don't have flash installed you won't get the flash ads you get a static ad so if apple doesn't install flash with the macbook air i guess uh what uh, chris or any of the new computers or any of the new ones huh that's yeah, they're, they're turning it off for all of them I mean, yeah I, I think this is a bigger it's a bigger thing than just battery life i think it by the way could also be and Steve Gibson in our security program brought this up, the fact that if you put Flash in a build, you may well have an old version. And since Flash has had a lot of security issues, as a, an insecure version of Flash on your build, wouldn't it be far better to just say, download the latest version of the plugin? Of course, they put QuickTime on there. Well, I think that I think one of the issues is, is that if you are a minor, if you have a small percentage of, a, of an industry, um, you can do a lot of things that are legal under antitrust. If you become a majority stakeholder right. in a computing device, so if you start, if, 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 if people start making the argument that it's not just laptops, it's computing devices, and they include iPhones and iPads and, and computers, and they start seeing that Apple has 50, 60, 70 percent of the market, they can no longer do these things. You had to, you had to have done them before that happened. Right. So I think that if Apple's going to do anything that's going to go, you know, to do things that are monopolistic, they don't have so to, to worry. Speak, They're never going to have a significant percentage of the PC market. But if, but if, what if you are a lawyer? If I was a lawyer, I would define it as personal computing device. I would not define it as well. But as I a, think any judge would say no. There's no. There's a big difference between an iPhone and iPad. If the iOS runs across everything, maybe not. But this not. isn't. Ah, uh, but this isn't yet iOS. So but they're safe if, now. If the I, uh, say no, I'm saying they're safe. Uh, th there's no you're case right down now. The road. What I'm saying uh, is, is that if I was a lawyer talking, you know, and, and you're looking at the trajectory of what you're doing and how successful you are, if you're going to do anything that is quote, you know, that that's quote, Apple can do this stuff. Microsoft couldn't. If Microsoft stopped installing Flash. They would be in court tomorrow. <laughs> Adobe's CTO Kevin Lynch says, "Quote: It's a false argument to make when you're. This actually echoes you, Alex. When you're using, or rather, displaying content, any technology will use more power to display versus not displaying content. If you use HTML5, for example, to display ads, that would use as much or, and I, this is his contention, not mine, as much or more processing power than what Flash uses." I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if it's case. more, but I, but I definitely think that because there's there's some chipsets that are actually in the iPhone and iPad that are optimized and, and that are optimized for, for H five, but in H two sixty four, but not Flash. Right. And in fact, uh, I I don't know if this is true, but I think I read on ours that one of the advantages Apple has by making its own processor is they can leave out the code, the microcode that might support something like Flash, optimized yeah. for what they do use. Right. So it may well be that Flash hits a MacBook Air harder. 
Who not? Well, not an air, but a, uh, oh, they're not optimizing for it. The air is just a core two. Well, so. and we're seeing. We saw Adobe. I think it was last week or the week before. They're announcing that they are. There's a lot more support coming for a, um, being able to author in Flash and export to HTML5. I mean, I think they're starting to. <laughs> yeah, they're they're doing it too. You're gonna you're gonna hear your fan getting hit pretty hard when you do that. Uh, <laughs> you're, are you using Flash to create Flash? Is that the idea? No, no, no HTML5. <laughs> H- Flash and it's, it's, tran- HTML5. it's a translator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the thing that makes it that moves Flash over to right. HTML5. Yeah, Adobe yeah, yeah. Uh, Lynch also says, quote, uh, the Apple is inciting and condoning attacks on Flash. We don't think it's good for the web to have <laughs> aspects closed off, a blockade of certain types Thank of expression. Thank God. Finally, finally, Adobe. I'm, I'm so glad that they're getting out and they're talking about openness. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it's high, it's high time that they really take the world to task. Oh, we are so there's a decade of content out there that you just can't view on Apple's device. And I think it's not only hurtful to Adobe, but hurtful to me personally. No, hurtful to everyone that created that content. <laughs> well, and, and, and I think that Adobe is. I think Leo got a report that like, they're casting the next Twilight movie. They're going to be listening to Twit. <laughs> I want that job. Well, I, I really think it is important for Adobe to move towards. They have a lot of incredibly talented designers, and they have a lot of incredibly, you know, interesting technologies that they they have there. And you know, if they if they can stay ahead of this and move those authoring technologies and move those artists into an HTML5 environment i think that they're going to be they're, they're going to be they're going to have a, a good aspect but if they hang on to flash too long i think they're going to have trouble one more sob story from t-mobile t-mobile said the reason that we had such a bad quarter is because <laughs> oh boy <laughs> is because we don't have the iphone wait wait no the, the dog <laughs> ate my lunch yeah no if we had if we had the iphone yeah uh, Germany's same. Deutsche Telekom AG <laughs> reported profits that beat expectations but blamed poor performance on its American T-Mobile subsidiary on the inability to sell the iPhone. The U.S. used to be a cash cow for Deutsche Telekom, <laughs> but it has struggled, struggled there and since 2008. Leo, Leo, don't, don't provoke the Germans. <laughs> We've all seen how that ended. Um, Rene I, I, I'd, like, I'd like to announce that my own uh, self, my own uh, mobile broadband company, uh, is doing extremely well. Uh, it's only limited profit-wise by the fact that we don't sell iPhones, Android devices, Windows mobile <laughs> yes. devices, or any popular handsets of any kind. Uh, and we're limited to basically any third third party unit and phones I happen to have in the garage. Yeah. Other than that, we're great. Yeah, we're just we're That's, solid. It's, it's not. It's the iPhone's fault. Yeah. Rene Olbermann, not related to Keith Olbermann, said T-Mobile's churn rate in the U.S. is being driven by the iPhone. They have a very high churn rate. He says, consumers like T-Mobile, but they also want to have the iPhone, <laughs> <laughs> which we have no chance of getting in the short term. And that's interesting because there were rumors that maybe T-Mobile would have the iPhone. No it's reason. a GSM phone, right? You're kind of like, why would Apple go through the trouble of T-Mobile? That's the issue. Is that it doesn't provide anything that is significantly better than what they're getting from AT&T. I mean, the, the, the only one you really want is Verizon. I know a lot of people that are waiting. Like, they're all just sitting there watching to wait. I mean, there's Is that officially so- happening? Is that officially, officially it's not happening? not official, no, but no. Uh, boy, the Wall Street Journal, which has been the house organ of Apple for some time now, uh, mm-hmm. says so. So I believe it. Yeah, it's, it's it, the, uh, I just, uh, almost everybody I know that doesn't have an iPhone has Verizon. And they're Verizon. just waiting to get an iPhone yeah. when Verizon... Yeah, it was a, kind of a big disappointment with the, and I think Microsoft probably uh, feels the same when they the Windows Mobile phone comes out on AT and T. It's like head to head with uh, yeah yeah, um, and I can't I cannot yet report and certainly not no scientific reporting on whether this is a uh, has less problems with the AT and T network than the iPhone does, or I should say fewer problems, but uh, it it seems to be about the same to be honest, right. which is not great. Dropped calls, uh, crappy audio few bars, all of that stuff. I'm in a bad AT&T area. It's called it's California. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's called the United States. United States of America. Uh, let's take a break. We're going to talk more. We've got your picks coming up in just a little bit, too. Uh, Andy, we do, do we have an audible uh, today? I don't think we do, so uh, hold your <laughs> audible powder. I I'm, do I'm have, holding my audible. I do have audible powder. Hold that, hold that audible. Hoping you can't see it, and they're holding it out of the camera because otherwise, keep it out of range. Be- Save that pick. I do want to. I do want to talk a little bit about our friends at Citrix who make a great product called Go to My PC, and they really are at great pains to let you know that it works on Macs. In fact, you could try it free right now for 30 days on your Mac if you go to go to mypc.com. 
Use the offer code MACBREAK. You can also try it free on Windows. It works on both. In fact, it's a great way to go cross-platform. I do know people who go to coffee shops. You know, we're hearing about this Fire Sheep, this Firefox plugin that lets people steal your login to Twitter and Facebook and Google and other places, WordPress. Um, what a great solution. Use Go to My PC. Go to that coffee shop. Log into your office computer. Surf from there. You're 128-bit SSL. Absolutely protected. It's just one of many ways people are using GoToMyPC. It's the ideal remote access solution. The holidays are coming. You want to go home early. want to be there for the turkey. But you don't want to come back to a full mailbox? Go to MyPC.com. If you visit GoToMyPC.com slash MacBreak, you can try it free for 30 days. Remote access done easy. In fact, so easy that if you, try, if you go there right now before I'm done talking, you will have that installed. It just takes a few seconds. Then you go out on the road with your laptop. You don't have to have it on the laptop at all. You know, I go to it's, you know coffee shop with my MacBook Air. I log on to go to my PC uh, with my credentials. Thirty seconds later, I'm on my office computer. And having access to you know being able to get to your computer from afar has really changed the way that I you know what I carry. You know, and, and because now like how it, much data it, I carry. It is I know, kind I of cloud computing, isn't it? Because but your cloud is your computer uh, at home or the computing, office. It's yeah. your personal cloud. I mean, because a lot of times I have I have way too much data. I can't put it all on the cloud. Right. Uh, I put a lot of it on the cloud, but I can't put it all on the cloud. And so, but I, I well, used to carry also, it around. Well, and you can run programs. You can run send and receive your corporate email, for instance. Yeah. None of us work in big corporations, but uh, that's a that's a real boon, mm -hmm. especially if the uh, if you send an email to the boss. I would recommend like three in the morning. <laughs> from your corporate email saying, working a little late, but I'll, I'll be in in the morning at uh, 7 a.m. as always. It fools them every time because bosses don't understand. Go to my PC. Go to, <laughs> unless you're the boss and you do understand it. Go to mypc.com slash MacBreak. It is a really great product. Give it a try. We know you will like it. We thank Citrix. They've been a great supporter of uh, the Twit Network for, I think we're on our third or fourth year with them now. Just wonderful. Uh, moving along. Mac app prices. Now, I don't know if you can trust this or not. Somebody blew up the, uh, the ad or the uh, presentation for Mac apps. Uh, what is this from? Uh, yes, the Apple's promo image for the Mac app store and looked at prices. And if you, if you look really carefully, you'll see that the iLife apps are 15 bucks each. The iWork apps, 20 bucks each. That's pretty much the same price as they are uh, in the regular store, if you buy them online or if you buy them in a store. Um, right. So, uh, but, you know, it's funny. $15 doesn't feel as bad as $49. Well, you may, not, you may decide you're not going to use a lot of those. I, I, like, you know, for instance, you might want to use pages, but you don't want to use numbers. And you don't. Do you think that, and by the way, in this promo copy, they do have a free dice game roll -em. So it's important that, you know, they're kind of emphasizing, yes, there will be free stuff in here. Uh, they've got a $5 game there, $4.99, called Fast Lane. Color Studio, $30. So they're, this, this, you know, I think there's some thought that went into this. I think it's reasonable to look at this and say, yeah, this is kind of what Apple is going to be. They're setting the pace. Pushing, yeah. Does that sound right for an app store? Well, I mean, I think that they're saying if you're in a general market and you have a basic use item, this is the price that, you know, Apple's going to, you know, try to set the pace with. I think that there are there are iPhone apps that I bought that are a lot more expensive than the $3 or $4. That's true. $4. There are, there are $50 a, iPhone apps. If you're in a vertical market, um, there are applications. You know, I bought TomTom for my iPhone. It's $99. That's right. It was really I'm expensive. very happy with it. You are know, you? I, oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. So the... Uh, uh, so, I, I, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't charge more in a vertical market, but it does, it will make it harder if you're making a general application to sell it for more than $20, I think, because the people are going to compare you to those things. They are accepting apps now for the, uh, in fact, they're, they're begging developers to send apps out for the, uh, the app store. Um, how soon, Andy, do you have any thoughts on how soon we'll see the app store? They said three months about three weeks ago. I, yeah, I don't think we'll see it by the end of the year. I think that in January, um, Right now, we're sort of in the part, aren't we? we're kind of in the part of the year right now where we start trying to figure out what Apple is going to be talking about in late January. And there are at least two or three things that are kind of on that dark that docket. One of them is to announce the, the opening of the Mac App Store. Another one is going to be, here's what the iPad 2 is going to look like. Uh, third one is white iPhone, finally. Uh, and then there's, then there's an opportunity to show off the first non-canned demo of what the line's going to look like. Right. So, so I'm, not, I'm not encouraged to think that they're going to try to get it ready uh, before the end of the holidays. Uh, it would be great if uh, for, uh, for Mac developers if every time you all these people are getting the $50 iTunes gift cards, 
would have the opportunity to buy their $10 game in addition to the usual $30 for the music and $15 for the iPhone game as well. Uh, but I don't think they're going to make that. I think it's going to be January. Yeah, I, 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 what I think is kind of interesting is that the uh, Mac developers are getting actually a lot more warning than they normally get. I mean, normally you get it, you get to see this at WWDC. And I find that it is it is interesting uh, as you look at this that, that now we're not seeing it just happening in June and they're getting a lot of warning. We're giving you a preview. We're letting you do these app stores. We're going to let you build up. And then we're going to probably talk. That's why I think we're going to see even more as we get to, um, you know, to, to WWDC. We're going to see even more changes to uh, what's available on, you know, on the Mac platform. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to get Merlin back on here. He seems to have <laughs> dropped off. Yeah. Um, moving I was, on. I was kind of, I was kind of a little bit disappointed because uh, Mac, the Mac Tech uh, conference was both for IT and developers. And so I was looking forward to putting out those questions to as many different developers as possible. And I really can't find anybody who is scared of the App Store at this point. Everybody seems to think that it's going to be good for users. It's going to be good for developers. And if you feel as though you're in a developer business that or the uh, app store can't possibly help you, it will leave your business unchanged. That the, if, you, if you really are a direct to the consumer sort of business where you, you really want to spend or you want to uh, sell the kind of app that Apple's never going to approve, at least those people seem to be convinced and confident that their business is not going to be ruined or affected in any way by the fact that their $400 uh, image editing app is not going to be inside the app store. So well, I think in the short term, I think they're right. I, I just feel like they're, um, you know, I just, there's no way. I mean, when you look at five years from now, I just think that there's not going to be any. Oh, we've had this conversation. I know, I'm, I'm just going to bow out because I, you know me, I'm Mr. Red Gloom and Doom, Chicken Little. But uh, I, you know, I think the truth is I will like the App Store. That's not. That's kind of what yeah. concerns me. Is that it's going to be very appealing, uh, so appealing <laughs> I can see everybody saying, "Oh, we well, don't need." Here's the thing: else. is that, here's a good example. I mean, I think that I mean, there, I love my you know uh, creative my Adobe Creative Suite. But I don't have Acrobat running, Acrobat Pro running on it, even though I bought it with it. Why? Because you because, don't want it. No, no, no. I, I like Acrobat Pro. I use it a lot to sign things and everything oh. else. But it broke. I am too afraid to run the reinstall because on another machine, the, the reinstall, everything. like yeah. everything's working. All yeah. the other CS is working. So this will be I an can't, advantage. Exactly. I can't. Yeah. I don't want to update Acrobat because I'm afraid that if I go through that whole process again, the certification process and all this other stuff, that something else is going to break and it's going to take me down. And, it's, and the, the, the virus that Adobe got with, from Macromedia as far as how they manage you know, DRM um, has had turned something that was usually fairly simple into a nightmare. You know, and, and the thing is, is every time I deal with specifically cs4 um i just think i can't wait until the app store so we f we figure uh end of 2011 i mean end of january 2011 all of these announcements will happen at the same time there the the rumors are that the iwork 11 will come out then and that makes sense that you would hold on to iwork 11 uh and ship it when you open up the store yeah, sure. I'm also I'm also kind of wondering how much of iWork 11 is go, is going to incorporate technology that will be that will be supported by the next editions of the iOS and the next iPad. So that's kind of interesting to me. I, I'm really I'm, I'm really like, hoping I'm we're going to I'm just saying it's kind of yeah. interesting to me. I think I <laughs> I uh, I think that uh, I mean I, I'm really hoping we see more cloud. You know, I think that's the big thing is integrating that. You so think that's you what can, North Carolina is all about? I don't know if that's what North Carolina is all about, but I think for the new iWork, if you're, especially if you're going through this iOS thing, I'm being able to edit. I think the big, the big thing is I can edit my office documents on my laptop, on my iPad, on my iPhone, and I don't have to, and it's all seamless and they're all integrated and it's all on my .Mac account. I mean, yeah. I think that, that if they don't have that, uh, that narrative, I think that they're going to have some, you know, they're, they're going to get some blowback. What, what a thrill it would be if Apple just whipped out the checkbook and said, you know what, let's just buy Dropbox. This is too taking too long. Let's just buy Dropbox. Would we'll it be a thrill or, or, or would you, I, I mean, I love Dropbox. I worry about Apple owning it. Uh, as a guy who uses mostly Apple hardware, I'm not worried about Apple owning it. Yeah. As a guy <laughs> who know, uses no, it both I, I think, Apple and Windows, I, think, I am. Of course, I we, think, you know, I we're think, using Pogo they, Plug more actually now because then we we have unlimited storage. It has much of the same yeah. functionality. But we I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that would be bad news for, for Windows people or people who don't rely on iPhones and other things because they've already demonstrated the iTunes app that it can support multiple platforms very, very well. Um, the What I like about the Dropbox idea is that they would just simply 
you know, you, you just take off one logo, slap, slap on another, and simply add so many different people to the Apple Cloud Computing team that already have a great service out of the box. It's actually uh, up and running. Uh, I'm not sure that they are ever going to get uh, the mobile me, uh, and uh, I just get to the same level of usefulness as Dropbox. I mean, look at what they did, what Dropbox did, just by actively courting Cocoa developers and making sure their APIs were very, very flexible. They pretty much now own the cloud storage market for the iPad and, and, and the iDevices. Box.net is very good. Other services are very good. But Dropbox is the one service that you have to have, you have to support if your app is going to be really supporting cloud computing. That is one hell of an achievement, especially when you consider that Apple owns, especially their own network storage feature that so many different Mac users already have built in. Oh, and we've got Merlin Mann back. I'm so relieved. Yay, sorry sorry Merlin, about that, Merlin. I'm not sure what uh, what happened. I think it was our end, not yours. Oh, it was probably mine. <laughs> are, you talk, are you talking about this uh, this rogue storage facility they've got going? Well, we were talking about North Carolina, but then Andy's uh, posited, wouldn't he be happy if Apple just bit the bullet and said, all right, we, our own solutions aren't working. Let's just buy Dropbox. I've said it since like the third hour I used Dropbox. And I, I know most acquisitions these days are usually about talent rather than, I mean, they might obviously have some kind of infrastructure in place. How much I, would I, it cost? I mean, they got $51 billion burning a hole in their pocket. <laughs> Lay a couple of billion on those Dropbox. Dudes. It wouldn't even be a couple well, of billion. Put some of those resources into polishing the integration with mobile me rather than trying to, as we used to say back in the day, boil the ocean. I mean, if somebody else has that solution and it works. I always wonder, though. I mean, like, I'm one of the people that flipped on the eternal backup stuff. I have no idea how they're going to, that'll scale over the, over time. But, you know, Amazon just, uh, AWS, is that what it's called? Just reduced, didn't they just yeah. reduce their prices? Yeah. I mean, Amazon Web Services. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's making big moves. Amazon did that the same week Box.net uh, announced that they're going to give you now 10 times as much storage uh, as they used to on all of their paid plans. Uh, and they're also adding more enterprise uh, and enterprise features to it. Although Box is clearly going more towards enterprise usage as opposed to just ordinary people who want their infinite 5 gigabyte flash drive. My, my thing with uh, Dropbox, and I think this is coming in a future release, is that, well, I say this every week, but I still, that ability, this is going to be my Alex, I'm going to call this. But that, uh, my <laughs> Alex wants to open source OS X. What do you want, Merlin? I just want iTunes. Okay. Now, I, what I, um, <laughs> I want it to let me select uh, a tree, a part of yes. the tree that goes in a certain place. Supposedly, like, that's imminent. I've got 53 yeah. gigs available, but no way am I going to put 53 gigs on there. Um, I would put, you know, I'd love to have most of my iTunes on there, but I, you know what I mean? That'd be so much easier than trying to sync between computers. But I mean, I think that's where it's going to have to end up going. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. I mean, I, it, it makes no sense to me. I'm not a business guy, but I don't understand why Apple doesn't just buy them or something, something replicate that and just give everybody even just a gig, just give people. Well, yeah, Microsoft uh, is uh, has SkyDrive. It's five gigs. Like well, gigas. Free. Am I frozen? No, you're not frozen. You're just cold. Mm. Mm. Might be Dropbox running. Let me sure it's <laughs> yeah, Turn off your sync. But um, boy, that just seems like a no-brainer to me to get to that point where, like, yeah, the iPad doesn't need a computer to sync. You turn it on. You're like, that's the nice thing about that G1. When I flipped on the G1, even the even the G1. I flipped it on and my stuff was there. Yeah. It just, it was fantastic. I think more and more you're going to see mobile leading the way actually for this uh, cloud computing and this idea, you know, that, uh, cause you don't have storage. You think, mo you think cloud computing is really going somewhere with mobile? Well, don't you? Oh no, I mean, I thought, is that kind of a tautology? Are you, so you're saying like for, you're saying as well as it, it'll, obviously it's for mobile, but you're saying also well, for Well, I think what happens is you get used to the fact that you log into your account and it's all there, as you said, Merlin, and, uh, your phone obviously doesn't have any storage, so it has to. Uh, HTML5 is the other one. Like, uh, the CRM that I use has yeah. an HTML5 app, mm -hmm. so like everything's just synced all the time. It yeah. just goes. Yeah. Love Actually, it. I wonder if uh, somebody's just saying in the chat room, take the uh, hard drive out of the air and just use Dropbox. <laughs> if you had enough bandwidth, <laughs> you could. I mean, it's a bandwidth issue, obviously. Yeah, a lot of companies yeah. would like that. Yeah. If we had 100 yeah. megabit connections in our, you know, right. that were that were in owned. Sweden, you could do that. Yes, well, you're not, not you're back to what Oracle was trying to get to in, in the Thin mid 90s. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, so yeah. Barry Olson will put start. You know, say I don't the know. I, don't is, know whether... I remember when um, this is nothing against New England, Andy, but when I when I <laughs> very first started moving a lot of my stuff into what now was called the cloud, um, I remember I was all like, "Yeah, 37 signals, yay! Hard drives suck." And uh, I remember standing. <laughs> 
in my uh, my mother in law's yard in uh, just outside of Providence. Oh, you know this area, you know uh, Barrington. I'm standing there in Barrington. I got nothing. I got no bars. I got no nothing. I got no G's. And it's <laughs> and, and you start to think cloud computing is really in the past been for people with an Ethernet connection. Because if you don't have syncing with it, it's kind of pointless. Well, and I spent a lot of my work is done on a plane, and so for me, it hasn't cloud computing hasn't. I mean, when I'm in the clouds, I can't be connected to the cloud. That's really the sadness. I think Dropbox is getting there, and that stuff like land-based syncing. Do you guys are you using the versions that have land syncing? So no, I don't know that. two of your boxes are Let's, on the same land. It syncs locally rather than through the cloud, so it's a lot faster. Yeah, well, that, that's that's why I always thought that Dropbox had the best solution. Where it's not the it's not just sending your files off to Never Never Land. It will just simply copy every file you have everywhere that you have Dropbox installed. And not only that, but you can rewind any file to any state it's ever been. Uh, and <laughs> then Small, the, the, the smallest of, files first. Smallest files first, which is so smart. Oh, and, and, and the end, of, the end of the pitch is, oh, and by the way, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> It's like I, I just I've just uh, I was I was just on Dropbox. I wanted to double check that uh, that air sharing feature. By the way, yes, you can get a URL to like a PDF and it will download it directly into air share. Uh, but I, I was reminded that I'm paying for 50 gigabytes. I'm using barely a fraction of it. And the reason why I'm paying for 50 gigabytes is that I was after after three months of using Dropbox, I was filled with a, a, a all consuming <laughs> desire to just give the money. <laughs> like, I agree. You know, if I could, if they, if it's just, it's just, you know, if I could, if they have a special, you know, put money in a box and send it to this address service, I would have just put money in a box. I've got, I've got, I've got a shoebox full of pennies. I would have just sent them the pennies and said, use that uh, if it fits a chips box, of course. I agree. I totally agree. I have a friend on Tumblr that said something like that not long ago, and it articulated something I really believe, which is I get nervous when I can't pay for something, you know? <laughs> and so like Xbox, I, I don't know what's going to happen with it. Yeah, right, right, yeah, right I agree. Yeah, so pay for if, it. Yeah. If, you, if you feel like your mom's saying, I am make, it's, it's lovely, but are you making any money are with it? Are you making it? any can, money? Can, 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 I, like can I give you like a few mom. bucks? You need anything? Right. Yeah. It's like right. your mom going like, well, you should like the goldfish, but you shouldn't like, like, like the goldfish. <laughs> is it going to go away? You know? It's like, no, no, I want the goldfish to stay alive. Let me pay the goldfish. <laughs> I find myself a lot of times telling people if I if I want to do something for for free that, that I always have to explain to them what the business model is for it so that they get that I'm, yeah. I'm not just doing this for free. There is a reason for this, and it's not just that you know. Well, otherwise, but there's business people, models and there's business models, and that's the problem. I know everybody has a business model, even if they're giving it away. Yeah. It doesn't mean that X marks had X marks had a business. Well, I would model. like to know what those are. Well, like well, but Vox is, Vox is a good one where uh, you know I put stuff up there. Yeah, you know, and we it had a about business it. model. It had ads. It didn't. <laughs> How many users, Leo? How many users did Xmarks have? Uh, it was several hundred thousand, as was, I remember. It was a lot, right? The and issue was... Still trying to save it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it looks like they are going to save it. I don't know if they're going to save it with a premium solution or somebody's going to swoop in, but apparently it's it's still running. And the issue they said was, oh, we had, here was our business model. We were going to uh, collect a lot of bookmarks and data mine them, and they were going to be very useful, but didn't quite work out that way. Hey, let's Man, quickly. I, uh, I was so so I careful know. going I loved through those X -Marks. screens. I loved every X -Marks. one of those screens, I read every single letter of that. And what I are they doing with it? Every single one. Yeah, yeah. What are they going to do with it? Yep, yep, yep. See if you right. can uh, name the company that is running this ad. <laughs> yeah. It's an iPad and a MiFi. And the roof is coming off his house. That's a selling point. I, I believe they're raising the roof because, <laughs> you know. He's now sitting in his yard without a house. That's where his house used to be. I'm not sure I understand. Rule the air, it says. Verizon. This is a Verizon's iPad ad. Keep watching the skies. <laughs> so I, 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 have, I think I have all those options. You know, I mean, I yeah, think Andy I'm trying to do my own little ad here. Okay, yeah, let's exactly. see. There let's we go. See. Nee, 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 I think all of us do. do nee, you have one nee, nee. I had a MiFi, and then when I bought the uh, Droid X, it has tethering, so I use that. <sighs> yeah, so I, I have it, you know, and the thing is, I, I do find that I use it when I can't, when, when AT&T breaks down, I like having my, my MiFi as a backup, um, you know, for, for that. Here's I'm thinking the deal. of installing a MiFi in the, permanently in my car. Here's the problem with the Verizon deal. It's, so it's a Wi-Fi iPad, and it's a MiFi locked to the Wi-Fi iPad. So you, it's not really, a, yeah. Oh, f screw that! Why would you do that? And they Why charge you, you the same for, price for, as it would cost for a three G iPad, one hundred twenty bucks more than the Wi Fi who, iPad. Who, 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 
I don't well, understand. It, somebody's not paying attention would be fooled by it, I guess. <laughs> this, because I'll tell you, you, I don't do know that? if I make my money back on this every month. But oh, I love it. Yeah. It's a lot of dough. But if amortized over a year, if I travel, sometimes I'll travel three times in one month and then not at all for, you know, you know how it works. But it's like how many nights of like 10 or 20 bucks a night? And I'm oh, yeah. pretty soon I'm like five devices work on this and it just works. And, and it's secure. Yep. It's secure-er, right? I mean, more so I'm not going to have that thundercloud deal or whatever where, where you know, people are stealing no, my I, cookie. I eat easily from the hotel stays, airports. Uh, you airports. know all that stuff. You know uh -huh. it is it, the, the MiFi pays for for me. It pays for it every month. I mean, I'm trying to. Close. By the way, but we should explain the MiFi is a credit card size device that Verizon and Sprint both sell that has a 3G built into it and becomes a Wi-Fi access point that you can use with five devices. Yeah, I'm trying to find out if the MiFi that's sold with the Verizon iPad is in fact like the iPad. I was told it was. Now my chat room says, no, it's not. But I don't think anybody owns one, so we don't know for but sure. But here's the deal. Is I guess the whole thing with Verizon It would Verizon be crazy, is, right? But on the other why, hand, that's how they... Why would you bother? Just go to Apple and buy an iPad, then just go to Verizon and buy a true. MiFi. There's no reason. I mean... It's convenience. I guess. The, the problem is, is that They're I got to They're charging less. They're not charging 60 bucks a month. I will tell you that if you have any interest in something like Apple, uh, Apple Care, you know, which I get for just about everything that I buy... Um, don't buy it anywhere other than Apple. It, you know, it's an Apple. It, hmm. it is. It's done while you while you order it. When you buy it at AT and T or Verizon or Amazon, you have to do it later. And let me tell you, I didn't. Something didn't get get synced up when I bought my kids' uh, computers on Amazon. And you know, now it's like this huge thing. Every time the 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 uh, computers get resynced, and I was like, okay, I'm always buying my my Apple hardware from Apple and just call it a day because it's just it's too much of a pain in the neck. Still trying to figure out whether that uh, MiFi is tied to the uh, iPad. I believe it is because I think they charge you the special twenty dollar. I mean, just just buy it. just. Uh, so here's the deal: Verizon MiFi, great. Don't bother buying an iPad there. That's just a waste of time. Oh, yeah, and and you won't get the GPS if you get the Wi-Fi iPad. Yeah, they sell those iPads at Target. Oh yeah, everywhere now. That's Walmart, crazy. Target, everywhere. That's I was at the AT and T store and they have iPads on the wall. I you know I was watching my son. My son has my old Wi-Fi one and uh, my three year old son. And um, and it is he's not allowed to he's not allowed to use it when the sun is up. You know, that's just, that's the rule. <laughs> so when it, when it's dark, I just I want him it's out like playing. Drinking. It's like drinking. No, right? I just want yeah. him out. I want Sun's him out over the yard. I'm hand me that iPad. I want him. I want him out outside having fun doing doing you know. Boy and I'll take things. a bloody mary then, too while when you're he gets at back. It, Dad. You know he you know and uh, the thing is is that watching him interact with that. I mean he has become so facile. You know, with what he wants and how he does it. And he's got a mixture of drawing apps and games and he can watch Netflix and not Netflix, um, iTunes or whatever. And uh, and, it, and it's amazing to watch him just kind of jump and watch him slow down and speed up and everything else. But I realize he's never going to really want to use a keyboard. Like he's well, by the no, time he's be. five or six, I don't know if he's going to ever learn how to type. Let me uh, run through a couple of uh, stories real quickly, then we'll get to our picks of the week. Uh, Amazon to offer 70-30 revenue split to magazine and newspaper publishers. Amazon obviously feeling some competitive pressure at this point from uh, not. I thought they were already doing that. Uh, it w it, well, it was. Uh, it's. It's. Um, I guess not. It's better deal. I think it's a better deal. Is it not, Andy? Than uh, it was. Um, I think that originally they were doing as their standard 50-50 split uh, right. to certain select partners that they were they were also offering better terms. But uh, Apple's is, doing 70-30, so this is... Right, this is this. Anytime you see Amazon announce 70-30, there's one reason why they're doing that. Yeah, APP. Hmm. Ellie. Skype 5. <laughs> Has anybody tried the beta with the group video chat and uh, redesign interface? I, I don't dare. I don't know anybody that has. <laughs> yes. <laughs> have you done that? Do, yeah. do you have it, Andy? Uh, Andy well, says, well, don't mess with Skype. I <laughs> 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 no. That's, uh, that no, is, no, by no, the way, no, a yeah. simulated I, Skype I, I, conversation. I'm not working Skype conversation. No, I'm not using the beta. Of course not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Apple increasing music previews in the U.S. on iTunes to 90 seconds. That's nice. That's sure. smart. <laughs> Most songs, that's all I want, to be honest. See, and the, and the thing is, though, there are a lot of, especially on these uh, these uh, these albums that have lots and lots of tracks on them, there are so, a lot of tracks that are less than uh, 90 seconds. There's some, uh, they might be Giants tracks, I think, that are that go to like <laughs> yeah, 60, the whole song. Yeah. Seconds, like, yeah. Right. Please yeah. pass the milk, please. But, you please know, pass the milk. If please. a song's that short, okay. <laughs> yeah, you can't get you can't get screwed out of a buck yeah. fifty-nine. Yeah, you don't anyway, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> some Smith songs. Did anybody get Skyfire before it uh, before it imploded? 
This is the uh, browser that plays Flash on an iPhone. Evidently, a lot of people want Flash on their iPhone. <laughs> uh, I use Skyfire on uh, on uh, Android. It's nice. It's a it's a nice browser. It's a good browser. And then uh, they have this kind of nice little thing where they cache Flash videos and play it back from their server in H.264, so it performs better. I have to admit, when I saw this, I was just like, there is no way those are going to survive. There's no well, way you could do that. That's what happened. Yeah. Is it's a free, it was a free browser. Or was it free? I don't even know. If, I think it was free. And it, I think it's like 2.99. 2.99? Well, they, their yeah. servers couldn't keep up with the demand, so yeah. they, had to, they had to... It's the first time ever I've seen a, an iPhone app that they had to pull back due to demand. Well, yeah, but the thing is, I, is it, but it's it's just that you're you 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 it's a heavy breakpoint. I mean, that, that, that's the whole the whole issue is is that you're now putting it all on pipe. Now, if they put it on an, on an S3 server or something like that, that would make more sense. But then, of course, well, it, would, cost it, some money. it would run them into the ground. But right. there's no if, if you're not popular, no one's going to use it. And if you are popular, <laughs> you're dead. You know that that was yeah. The it's like part. it's like drinking. It's one of those drinking salt water uh, business models. <laughs> or your own urine. No, I mean, like you think you're no seriously. Where uh, the story about new orders, uh, new order. Uh, had this single called Blue Monday. It was the best-selling single of all time. They had no idea when they put it out. The guy who designed it had, uh, and this, supposedly this is not entirely true, but the guy who designed the Blue Monday cover, it was like, it wasn't just, it was spot printing. It wasn't just a regular process. It had like 11 spot colors on it with a with a uh, die cut. Nice. <laughs> and it was the biggest selling 12-inch of all time. And they so lost they money lost, on it. They lost money on every record they sold. Oh, <laughs> so God. They sold oh. But we'll yeah. make it up in volume. <laughs> oh God! Oh, that's horrible. Terrible, oh terrible, gosh. terrible, terrible. Kind of, you hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> All right, let's uh, take a break. When we come back, it'll be time for your picks. So everybody, get their picks ready. Before. That's why I seem inattentive. I'm kind of oh, you're, are, yeah. Merlin's always sets up screenshots during well, the show. I, I've got one, but yeah. I don't know. I'll tell you what. I'm going to talk about Drobo. You do what you need to do, Merlin. Man, Drobo. I got a Drobo FS in my uh, in my closet at home. I love it. Uh, I'm coming out of the closet for Drobo. Drobo is the uh, the data storage solution. If you actually go, you want to know more about it, go to drobo.com slash MacBreak. You can see uh, all of, you know, Callie Lewis made some really great videos. There's videos from Drobo users. I think everybody sitting in this room is a Drobo user. Yes. We're, we're a heavy Drobo, Drobo heavy user. Heavy Drobo user. What is Drobo? It's a it's an enclosure for uh, from anywhere to four to eight disks, depending the, on which Drobo model you get. <laughs> it's, the, it's the square space yeah. of, of hard drives. You don't have to really think about it. You just simply say, I would like to works. have my stuff backed up. And I, I, got, will, I got red lights on one of mine, mine with four, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm too far So what crazy. you do when you get a red light, that's one of the things I like about it. The Drobo's on the front of the uh, Drobo face, which is, by the way, magnetically attached. So it's easy to it's cool. just pop it off. On the front, though, they've got, uh, they've got these lights. Let me see if I can pull up the picture here. Um, and they're green when there's plenty of capacity, everything's running fine, but, but then they go to orange when you're running low on a disk and red when your disk is full. Now, to add capacity, all you have to do is pop off that front, pop out the drive. You don't even have to turn the Drobo off, although Alex says you should, but you don't have to. You, turn, you pop out the drive, pop in a new drive. I just turn it off. It's, it's hot swappable. Yeah, I pop them out while they're... Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought you were one of the people. That's, that's the whole people. demo. That, that, yeah, that's no, the I know. Yeah. No, it's hot swappable. You pop them out while you're working. You pop it out. Uh, so you take out the smallest drive, you put in a big new two terabyte drive. All of a sudden, the Drobo rebuilds, and you've got now more capacity without losing a bit. Four drives means uh, you know that's the basic Drobo with a USB two and FireWire eight hundred. It takes about a third, maybe a little little less than a third of the total capacity for data redundancy, but you also get the speed benefit. The Drobo S is perfect for storing lots more data with five drives up to ten terabytes, and I think three terabyte drives are coming. It'll accommodate those just fine. And uh, it also is speedier. That's eSATA as well as FireWire 800 or FireWire uh, or USB 2. The Drobo FS, that's the uh, NAS that I have. It's really cool. Gigabit Ethernet. Then the Drobo Pro and the Drobo Elite. These are eight drives, Merlin. Eight. Count them. 16 <laughs> terabytes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, 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 uh, you don't have those, do you? Yeah, we do. Oh, the you're, elite. You're insane. The, well, here's the thing. We edit Mac Break. We edit all of the shows off of... We have five iMacs. It's fast enough you can edit Five it iMacs connected to it. And I and someone asked... Ice Scuddy? Ice Scuddy? Yeah. yeah. Ice Scuddy. Yeah. And, so, and, and, and the thing is, is I asked... So people had asked on the... Uh, after I said this on the last time we talked about this, is are they... Are they actually editing from the drive? And the answer is yes. yes. So all the computers are looking at it. They're all editing from those drives. These elites have dual uh, gigabit Ethernet ports, and they use the iSCSI protocol over those totally gigabit works. Ethernet. So it's fast That's enough ballsy. to edit. That is really ballsy, now, Alex. <laughs> He's a ballsy, ballsy. Well, it was. It, we, we did it's it meant as a, for that. Yeah, Merlin. It's, it's intended to do that. Really? That's yeah, the point. Uh, on the production? Wow. That's, yes. That's cool. They're yeah. basically a SAN. They of course support uh, virtualization and all the other uh, technologies. 
Uh, so you can have up to 16. See, we on our sand, we pay $1,000 for each additional seat. You don't yeah. pay that on the Drobo. You can have no. up to 16 people using it. We don't I, have 16. I like having two of them because you run into that backup problem. And so what I've done a couple times, yeah, I know I'm a rich guy. I buy gigabyte discs. But I think gigabyte right now is the sweet spot. <laughs> I don't know. You get uh, no, two gigabytes. I get, I get terabytes. I get, I get You're talking terabytes. Two terabytes. Two terabytes. I don't know. One and a half terabytes. How can you, how can you spend money on your data? You know, it's like, well, I <laughs> Why don't you just the, inscribe it on stone like the rest of us? Well, it's like, well, you, whatever you can afford to lose, dude, invest, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I get one gigabyte drives from, I usually get a new egg. They're like 80 bucks a piece. And what's great is if you got one with the, um, I think, I can't remember if I did, do they, if it was FireWire 800 or USB. But anyhow, you pop in a bunch of disks and you can back up one drobo to the other. Stick those in a safe and stick them, put them somewhere. Because that's a lot of data to lose. Right. You know, that's, that's the thing is you do need to back up. But So every drive you buy, you're kind of also buying other drives. You know what I mean? I think you have to kind of accept that. That's part of being, it's called being an adult. But <laughs> it's great to have that capacity with this instead of sitting around. You, having, wait a minute, Merlin. What is all this data storage that you got there? What do you do? I mean, you, you're a writer. It's text. What do you... I am bad about uh, having multiple copies of stuff, like everything my kid's ever done. It's like, oh, put that all in this thing. And But I'm, no, so basically um, music uh, and uh, and uh, legally obtained uh, media in general. And uh, <laughs> Oh, I get it. Now I understand. Time, time machine, time machine of a box. I got three layers of backup to what I do. It's really insane and anal. But one level is I do a time machine to my Drobo by my desk through the day. Wow. I do an overnight image to one of my drives on my Mac Pro, and then I rotate off site with a monthly backup uh, drive. So, it has, and then in addition to that, I can, the one at home I use for, for media, but it's, I love it. I love it. I guess, I guess I'm just saying like, if, if you get behind this notion that you're just going to have to buy hard drives, if you're an adult, like Drobo makes that a lot easier to deal <laughs> with. As a, yeah. I wish I could put all the, the data. We have just piles and piles and piles of raw drives. And so the, this is the, the near line storage for, for what we do. But yeah, I keep all of my, all the photos of my kids and everything else on my Drobos. I mean, I, how, I do, you, how do you keep track of those naked drives? I mean, how uh, do you like keep track of yep. what's on them? It's a good answer. <laughs> um, so there is a, uh, what we do naked is drives. We, we have raw drives and we have those, um, you know, Webatech whatever's. And then there, there's actually those of suitcases things, okay, you, well, little things you pop. And then you have little cases for them. You put them in and they, it's just like having a cassette case. Um, yeah, we have know, a bunch so, of those. Yeah, we so anyway, so, but we, we go through probably 10 or 15. We're now to the point where I used to say five or six terabytes a week and it's really closer to 10 or 15 terabytes a week. Jeez, the and so the, what? so the, um, what? We there it is. That, that's if they look like cassette cases, yeah. like yeah. they're right there. Yeah. So anyway, so the, uh, so the issue is, is that um, uh, we, we go through a lot of the drives and uh, what we do is we, we, you take them and we give them a, a name, a serial number, basically, uh, that um, then we, uh, so we, we put it on the drive and then we put it in and we scan it. So I think I use CD Finder, but the other guys use Disk Tracker, I think, or something that's like Disk Tracker. I'll have to find out what of, they're using right now. Sort of offline. So what data. it does is it scans the entire drive oh. and it pulls all those drives. We've got hundreds of drives in a database. And all you do is, and we're, we are, we are maniacal about naming conventions. And so naming conventions, folder structures, because when you have good naming conventions and good folder structures, what you'll do is you'll just type in, you know, I'm looking for, you know, you type in the, the, uh, the, the client code or the job code and it'll say, oh, that, all that information's on these three drives or on this two drives. We can find well, everything you could, in 15 you could You could grep basically down yep. to like the one unusual. Yeah, yep. totally. I so you can just, thing. if you do it, if you do it like four letter underscore, four letter underscore, four letter underscore, we can go, go over, you can grep, you know, go, go over eight characters and, and look at this and then, and then that's what have you're you looking for. Have you written this up? Have you documented this, Alex Lindsay? Have you written all this up? You know, I don't know if we have. Yeah, we did. I think have. we did early on. A GMT or something. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do one on I GMT. I think we're all getting to that's a good. point where we would benefit from okay. stuff no, I'll put it up because the, the, here's the thing is that for, for big raw data that we have, we put it, we put them on these raw drives because it's the cheapest way to store them. Uh, the important stuff, we put it on two raw drives because it's cheap and somewhat uh, more stable. For the stuff that we really need to keep, we keep on the Drobos. So the thing is, is that like, you know, so the, the Drobo has an archive of every final project that we've done. You know, and uh, well, not almost every final project and the stuff that we're working on the Elite just is keeping track of all the... The stuff that we do. All right, we're running out of time, so let me just finish this up. Just go to drobo.com slash MacBreak to find out more about the various models and save up to $500 off a populated Drobo when you use the coupon code MacBreak Weekly. Drobo from Data Robotics. I think you've probably got the idea. This is a good idea for you <laughs> and your data. It's killer. D-R-O-B-O, Drobo. All right, time for you, Alex Lindsay, to make a pick of the week. 
Okay, so I have uh, these quick. We gotta go. No, no, no. I got, I got, I got, I got two real quick ones. One's adult and one's ki- more kiddish. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we do a lot of, you know, we have to calculate a lot of. Well, we were just talking about storage, and we have to calculate a lot of sizes. And there's a great little um, application, um, and I don't know how much it costs. It's the AJA Data Calculator, and what it does is it literally, if you're trying to figure out video and you're trying to figure out how much space is this going to take. If I'm going to capture Apple ProRes HQ, I can, um, you know, just type in, this is it, and it'll tell you how many, how many gigabytes per hour that's going to chew up and allows us to calculate what kind of drives we need and where we need to go and, and so on and so forth. And so it's a, it's a, it's a little obscure. Uh, if you go to, yeah, if you go to the App Store, I think you'll find it. It's, 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 an, it's, a, it's a, it an app for the, uh, yeah. um, for the iPhone. And having it sitting there and you're having a discussion and you're figuring out, like, how many drives do I need to buy for this event? Uh, this is the typical problem that we have. Well, I do that um, so often. Well, I, I do it a lot. So, <laughs> but what was funny is, is a lot of people I know have this. And, and so I think that just if you don't know about it and you're a pro, um, then, then you should think about that. And um, it's either free or 99 or 99 cents or something like that. So definitely worth getting. The second thing is Itsy Bitsy Spider. My, Itsy this is, Bitsy Spider. So I have a lot of, I buy a lot of games and learning tools for my son, who's three, and let him play with them and see which ones he sticks so I'm just telling you, if you're a parent, this one really sticks. I mean, he just he, he sometimes moose design. sometimes he doesn't even call call his iPad his iPad. He just calls it his itsy bitsy spider. And, and he, he and, and what's amazing is how much there are a lot of complex interactions that are going on here to do lots of stuff. And he will spend you know well, this is a teaching just, tool. Yeah, though. yeah, it's a teaching tool. If and you so poke the friendly fly, she'll answer 15 fascinating questions. Yeah. Oh. And so, so there's lots of little things, but it's a, it's a real explorer thing that he can keep on coming back to over and over and it's over again. It's so funny. When my kids were growing up, it was CD-ROMs from Broderbund. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, now, right. and now it's iPhone apps. Yeah, so it's that, really changed. It's I, I just know that as a parent, I'm always wondering which ones are sticking because there's so many of them out there. And at least for my son, that one really sticks. And so I, I'm going to recommend it. And this is iPhone or iPad. And yep. the iPad, I would say, is big and pretty. That's, that's the one you want, right? He's got both of them. Does he? Well, you know, you buy it once and then you put it on both of them. Oh, it's it's uh, universal. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Does he prefer the iPad version? He prefers the iPad. I think in I would. Yeah, yeah, I I have a hard time selling them on the iPhone. And now, Merlin Mann, it is your turn to Thank show. Thank you very to much. Show I don't know if something. this has been done before. What is that? Uh, I hope not. It's called Photo FX. Have you, have, we, have you guys done this one? Oh, who knows and who cares? It's a right. it's a photograph <laughs> application for. I have to say, oh. the iPhone camera is so good that I've become much more interested in photo uh, software. Well, uh, I shouldn't probably even try and demo this. It's probably pointless. But uh, a pho- so there's all these apps you can get. It's like, oh, make this look like a crappy camera, or yeah. make me look like a hipster from Brooklyn. And there's all these great little like you know make this look like a Lomo or whatever, which are fun. But I think sometimes if you want to get a little more serious, I mean, the iPhone, not that I'm not serious, but the iPhone 4 has such a great camera that you actually can, I agree. like, you can actually, with a little, few tweaks and a little bit of cropping, sometimes a little bit of rotating, stuff that's hard to do right now with the regular stock software. There's a whole bunch of these apps. I could go into millions of them. Do you I'm like Photogene? Have you tried Photogene? I like that one. I don't think I have. That's another one that's got the same kind of, you know, Okay. Well, this Miss is a me. really, I like this one a lot. It's called uh, Photo uh, FX. Spell it for the name me, right? would you? Yeah, sure. It's uh, P-H-O-T-O space FX. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, this and, to be honest, Photoshop Express are, are two of my go-tos for just doing a little quickie things. Oh, we have it's done this of, before. Kind of, this is the Tiffin app. Yeah. This has a nice, oh, we have done it. Well, yeah. it's well no, nice it's worth mentioning features. again. Absolutely. Um, you know, one thing that's tough about the iPhone, obviously, is the size of the display. Right. It's hard to, you know, you, it's really easy to over sharpen. Everything gets a little crispy, but it's got some nice subtle effects. And like, I don't know what all these trademarks mean, but they've got like a lot of like what, what, <laughs> what Steve Martin would call a gel. They've got these like, um, Alex, what do you call that? When you got a copyrighted, make this a little more yellow filter. What's that called? A sepia? No, no, no. No, but there's like, I'll look it up here. But anyhow, there's this one page where you get the pretty basic stuff. Like, go in and like, let me, help me sharpen this. Fix the temperature. Da, 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 da. Do auto. This does auto, look great. Auto, auto. Yeah, it's, it's got a lot really of like, good. once you're comfortable with using the app, um, and again, this is not I'm Photoshop. I'm getting this right now. Right? A watermark? But, is that what you're talking about? Watermark or copyright? No, I'll get it right here. There's this, there's some stuff in here that I just, is ridiculous and I don't touch. These lighting effects, if you want it to look like basically the set of dark shadows or something, you can do that. But stuff like light balancing, um, here under the photographic section. Yeah, deep yellow. You can, I, this well, corrects and, warmth and coolness better than any app that I've seen. Yeah, the, the, the guys who write this, just you know, the, the guys who write this also, well, it's it's written by the same guys who write um, Silhouette Effects, which is the, the rotoscoping tool for uh, the, in, the film industry. I mean, these guys know, huh. 
they know film and film effects and you know the, the and the math behind this i mean it's not like this is some little uh, guy that thought I'd I'd look up some tricks for right. photos. I mean, right. these guys right. really know what they're doing, and then they're making and then they're making it simple and making it available. So I'm it's buying it right now. And, and it's a, there's a variety of things you can do. Just just so you know, this is not just for nerds. You can go in and there's like this auto adjust section could hardly be simple. You go to auto adjust, and then do you want auto color, auto contrast, or auto whatever? Now my eyes are not that great. I keep my brightness down low to save my battery. So other people will actually probably get more out of this than me. But if you got a decent photo to start with. It's just real fast to go in and, 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 and make little fixes with this. Uh, I think they have this for the iPad. Wait, no, I'm sorry. I think, they, I think it's just an iPhone app that will run on your iPad. But if they could come up, I and mean, this could be like your Photoshop, basically, I think. Anyway, um, photo, I know we're short on time. Photo effects, I like it a lot. Uh, Do you Instagram, the, Merlin? You know... Mm, I played with it. It's, I'm already like so sick of that. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're already over it. I'm already crack. over it. I made a crack on the Twitter about it yesterday. I said, I think I said it was the the missing um, ironic mustache for your iPhone. You know, it's <laughs> it's it's so like Williamsburg hipster to me. Like, oh look at this. There's it's blue now. Okay, it's fun for a while, but it's like me with the with the slow sync flash. Like I way ever did that for a year until people want to like punch me in the throat. Right. I think those fun makeup photo jazzy things are fun for a while, but. Let's be honest, you're going to be bummed in five years when all your photos look like they, they fell into it, like blue ink, you know, or <laughs> you've added all this noise to these photos, right, you know, right. but it's fun, whatever. I kids, like the social kids, aspect of it, but. Uh, yeah, I don't like social aspects of anything. Yeah, I know. You're really pretty much anti-social. <laughs> I, have, I have friends. Yeah. I don't need a computer. No, I don't have friends. See, there's the difference no, between you and me. Right. Oh, no, but anyway. You guys are my friends. I have lots of apps like this, Leo, but I like photo effects a lot. I also like uh, that liquid scale, uh, Photoshop Express, camera bag, photo rotate, does one thing, rotates photos. <laughs> no, no color, still awesome. I, I just got the thing that happens when it, it's kind of like a nice little uh, little thing that happens when I downloaded it and said, oh, you've already bought this app. Would you like, that, like I love that. that. Five, five, I love that, that feeling. Happens, I'm afraid yeah, that, that happens to me like once a week. It's not going to cost me anything. I guess I have it. But I just took it off for some reason. So anyway, I'm putting it back on. Thank you, Merlin Man, Andy Inotko, your pick of the week, sir. I just looked at myself like on the monitor thinking, I, 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 I look like that field reporter that on election night is like sent out to like stand in front yeah. of a school building. Yeah, was there a while, storm? While what happened? Why is it so dark? Yeah, exactly. Remember like when we started, it was bright and sunny. <laughs> yeah. and now it's been a long like, damn show. <laughs> We've been here so long. It's dark now. The house isn't even there anymore. It's it's been hundreds of years. Is it evening? Years. Is that what happened? Did the sun set? <laughs> well, because the, the the Earth is actually an oblate spheroid that's on an offset no. axis to oh. the rotation to the sun. It's called a suborbital. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's wild. So it's actually just dark out. It's not well. Yeah, exactly. It gets light for a while, then it gets dark for a while. <laughs> Daylight uh, savings. <laughs> this is this. Behold your future. Oh. In three hours, it should be as dark as oh. this. California, beware. Uh, <laughs> okay, quick recommendation uh, and a timely one since we're talking so much about having like eighty. 50 gigillion watt, uh, gigillion storage by uh, storage devices uh, is Corellia Media Browser. It's a free media browser app uh, that will just simply anytime you're looking for media on your drive, be it music, be it photos, be it movies, uh, it is the best way to find the thing you're looking for. Because if you are clever, then yes, you use incredibly good nomenclature so that you can immediately figure out that I want picture. Of of Swan Boats and Boston Public Garden with the kid on the Memorial Bridge above it, but without the graffiti on the pilaster behind it. And then you just simply do a spotlight search and you find it. Uh, for the rest of us, though, you just simply have to look before until you find the photo that you want. Uh, and so what it does is it, it collects all of your, it, it's, it will essentially look throughout your entire hard drive for all of your photos, all of your audio, all of your movies, and all of your uh, Safari links, no matter where they are in photos, it can look inside your iPhoto library, your Aperture library, inside your pictures folder, anywhere. Uh, and so I often use it when I know that I've got a certain picture somewhere on that drive. The only way to find it is to simply tab over to the iMedia browser, 
click on photos, click on the pictures library, uh, pictures tab, and it will simply give me huge thumbnails of every single image that's in the pictures folder and becomes very, very easy to find exactly that one piece of clip art that I found a few weeks ago, uh, when exactly the moment that I need it. Uh, and it works that's, that's just as easily, whether you're, no matter what movie clip you're looking for, all these other things that are just not keyword searchable, makes it very, very fast. It's a free app. Uh, the second piece of good news is that it actually is a, a, an application articulation of a whole media browser engine that Corellia, uh, with a lot of uh, help from a lot of different programmers, are building. Uh, and this media browser is starting to pop up in a lot of third-party apps. Uh, just like if you're using iMovie and you want to grab a photo from iPhoto, there's a standard Apple media browser that pops up inside there or in GarageBand or anybody else. The idea of this media browser is to give that kind of functionality to third-party apps. So if you're in Mar if you're in Mars Edit and you want to embed a picture inside a blog post, uh, the engine that they use for browsing and finding the picture you want and embedding it is exactly this browser itself. So it's free, 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 free. It's one of those things you just toss it into your startup applications list uh, and then the moment that you need it, tab over to it and you'll get what you want in 30 seconds. It's really, really a very, very slickly done app. Also a very Mac-like app. It's very, very pretty, very, very slick. Karelia, of course, the guy does launch bars. Uh, great, great designer. Nice looking Sam, apps. Sam Fox, a lot of they, they do a lot of really very pretty apps. It's, you, you see, even on the Mac side, you're starting to see a lot of people who are sort of succumbing to the disease of, I can either sit and think for four hours, or I can just put in a menu, or I can just put another tool palette, or I can put another button. Uh, Karelia usually tries to figure out, no, there must be a way that we can add this feature without adding complexity. So. Well, yeah, should, should you know a, a secondary plug for Sandbox, which you briefly mentioned, which is a web design software that's uh, pretty high powered, pretty interesting. Well, the recount is going to go at least into midnight. We're told, Stu, uh, <laughs> but we'll be here uh, until one of the two candidates decides. Until back to the news at eleven. <laughs> Poor Andy and Narco in the dark. <laughs> Hello, Andy. You can stay there in Indianapolis for a little longer, can't you? <laughs> uh, that's a good question, but the independent candidates really got too drunk to get out of the truck, uh, and as a result, was not able to get that last second canvassing. We don't know how that's going to affect writing candidates back to you, Ted. Andy Anako is at the Celestial Waste of Bandwidth and the uh, Chicago Sun-Times. Always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us today, Andy. Merlin Mann is the man at uh, You Look Nice Today, a great podcast. We're uh, getting early indications that Alan Jones from the Sensible Party is turning out just slightly ahead of Kevin phillips Bong from the oh. Slightly Silly Party. I like <laughs> it. They're, they're, Merlin's on the light side and Andy's on the dark side. You're, you, know, it's guy, you guys are like duct tape. It's good. <laughs> I like it. We, this is good. we should do this from now on. One person will be dark, one person will be light. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for another lovely episode. We adore Leo. you, Merlin. Thank you for being here. Uh, MerlinMann.com, M-E-R-L-I-N-M-A-N-N.com. -N and there is a You Look Nice Today, a new one that Adam Brand new put one. together. But mm -hmm. it's not for um, the first-time listener. Oh, you know, it's not very long. I think you could make it through it. There's certainly a lot of things related to the parts of the body where a child comes out, and I think that's fun for everybody. It's oh, yeah, it's great fun for everybody. Hey, there's Chang and Ang. Look at that. Chang and Ang, the original Siamese twins. <laughs> we call them attached Asians now. That's the nature. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's more politically correct, absolutely. <laughs> Alex Lindsay is at the Pixel Core, pixelcore.com, for his multimedia guild of artists. We we, uh, we seriously geeked out over the weekend, so we're, there'll be some uh, gear media techs that are from AES, the Audio Engineering Society. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we show, and I filled up my ear with goo to get get a custom. Oh, I've I've done that. I know. It's, and we best, have a show title. The best part is when they <laughs> they put well, it's like it's like a tampon through your ear. They put a little string that comes out of it. Yeah, they put they it a little too goo, far. I, I literally thought dry. he was going to put it into my. Oh, that goes very deep. Well, it has to. Yeah. And then after it dries, you have to sit like this for a while. Yeah. No, no, he didn't have to do that. Oh, you didn't have to no, let it dry? He just used oh. a big syringe and it just went... Yeah. Yep. And right. then mine, yeah. they had to let dry. Yeah. So we sit yeah. like this. And then they have a string on it and they pull it out and it goes... Yeah. It's, a, it's about a, the loudest but, sucking sound you've ever heard. I have a great photo in my Flickr feed uh, at Mac Macworld Expo of someone having that stuff like injected into his Ooh, ear. Yum, yum. And the expression on his face indicates that he was not expecting that sensation. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, you don't I, usually fear, feel stuff on your eardrum. That's a, yeah. a new new sensation. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a little odd. Anyway, but... Uh, and I... Um, yeah, that's it. That's so good. what's coming up? GMT is at pixelcore.tv. Yes. That's where the podcasts live. I'm Leo Laporte. We do this show. Well, we stay, you know what? <laughs> Tune in at 11 Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 1900 <laughs> UTC for the pre-show. And then yes. roughly half an hour to an hour later, we'll actually get into content. When we're good and ready. But I think that, the frankly, the pre-show is now uh, the, my favorite part of Mac Break Weekly. It is a lot of it's fun. It's the part we throw out, oddly enough. <laughs> I think we need to keep it.
It's kind of it's kind of like uh, artichokes. I think know? we need to pre sure. I think we need to keep. This is the heart, but we threw out the leaves, and I think the leaves are good. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the next day. Anything that's left over becomes a part of a Hardy's chef special stew. <laughs> you got it. Not the least bit tainted. It's a little off, but it's not. You know, it'll, my it'll people, my people ruin every part of the buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did, you get, did you get the link I sent? Tom Zoller over on Twitter, who's listening to us live, uh, drew us a cartoon of Colonel Peck. Oh, <laughs> so we, wow, we have already. Before we, uh, the, the, the link is in the MBW Rundown document. Oh, let me, let me pull that back up. I'd closed it prematurely, <laughs> apparently. Let me see. It's, it's, it's at the bottom underneath the picks of the week. <laughs> I thought that was... <laughs> you see, the danger though is that like already we're going along, but we could like if we know that uh, that artists are listening and can do stuff like that, we can sort of turn this we into a big as, improv challenge. Yeah, like, we can go as long as you well, want. The problem with Whoa. Steve Jobs is that oh it's kind gosh. of like he's in a Yeti costume on the Millennium Falcon, <laughs> straining a banana plant. Stop, stop, stop it, Andy! Stop it! That is so cool. Tom Zoller, awesome. loveandcapes.com. That is Colonel Panic, and he does seem a little panicked right there. He's got a kind of Gilbert and Sullivan feel that yeah. I like a lot. He's yeah. the very model of a modern I'm a modern Colonel, Colonel Panic. Panic. That's very cool. <laughs> Thank it. you for doing that so much. That is nice awesome. Job, Tom. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time. Oh, by the way, that uh, that 11 a.m., all that thing, 2 p.m., 1900 UTC, that's on Tuesdays. Just so you know, <laughs> at live.twit.tv. But you can also subscribe twit.tv slash mbw. I'm Leo Laporte. Have a great day, great week. We'll see you next week right here. Now get back to work. Break time is over, says... Colonel Panic. <laughs> How would he say that? I gotta pee like a horse. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye, boys. Little pit.